exactly a Chamber of Commerce kind of day, unless you're trying out for the men's or women's downhill. What a matchup we've got in the ACC. Six up, five down. The Clemson Tigers come in, winners of the WAC with a 7-1 conference mark. The Bulldogs of Louisiana Tech are 7-4 overall. As the song says, the weather outside is frightful, along with J.C. Pearson. Welcome back as our Capital One Bowl week continues here on ESPN. This is the first of three terrific matchups today. You know, when you talk about number one for the Clemson Tigers, he is number one. He owns 30 passing records. He's a tailback who also happens to be a terrific quarterback. And one of the most explosive players in the history of college football. No one's been able to stop this guy because he can beat you with his arm, which is very strong, or his feet. When he runs the ball, he's just like another tailback. On the other side of the ball, we've got Luke, the gunslinger McCown, a more traditional type quarterback, six foot four, very strong arm, over 3,300 yards and 28 touchdown passes on the season. You've heard it a million times in weather like this, snow, sleet, and freezing rain. Well, the offense has the advantage. The receivers know where they're going. An ex-defensive back right here. How about your thoughts? Well, defensively, it's going to be tough for both teams. On top of that, they have not played very well all season long. We take a look at the numbers. They've both given up a lot of yards, almost 30 points a game. But the key stat today, Jim, that rushing number. If you're from Clemson, South Carolina, what do you do if you get here early and three, four inches of the white fluffy stuff? You build a replica of Howard's Rock. The kick off the Tigers and the Bulldogs next. <laughs> For Tigers' last game, Travis Zachary, who was Clemson's career leader in touchdowns, was dismissed from the team following an arrest for alleged drug distribution. In his place, junior Bernard Rambert, who has averaged just 17 plays per game in the regular season, but is no stranger to filling in at bowls. He replaced an injured Zachary in the 99 Peach Bowl and last year in the Gator Bowl and has amazingly averaged 55 plays per game in those bowl games. Now, coaches say Bernard is probably the better true runner but without Zachary they lose experience and the best receiver out of the backfield and Jim certainly very crucial for him in this snow today coaches say they want to get him at least 20 carries very important in this weather important not to turn it over that was one of the things that Tommy Bowden talked to us about last night in his third year at the helm fifth year overall as a head coach with a record of 21 and 14 he was 18 and 4 in the two years at Tulane and over on the far sideline another famous father and name Jack Bicknell the son of of course the longtime Boston College coach he is here today serving more JC as a grandfather just kind of watching his psyched up son and how he does in this humanitarian bowl the weather well it started snowing about 4 30 this morning it's not stopped it's 32 degrees it's supposed to change to freezing rain then rain and then back to freezing rain we could have a little bit of everything so louisiana tech has won the toss clemson will kick off there is number one dantzler as a former defensive back and a guy that used to hate to play in weather like this. You've got two southern schools. Some of these kids probably have never seen real snow until they went snowmobiling the other day. It's definitely going to be a factor, and the coaches tried to play all week long the mind over matter psychological game. But when it gets this cold, it matters, and you do mind because your body is cold, your toes are numb, and your fingers are numb, which is really going to be a factor for these passing teams. This bowl has a history of high-scoring, wide-open affairs, and this is expected to be no different. At least it was expected to be that way on a dry field. It's the first time that the Tigers and the Bulldogs have met, but guess what? They'll meet again next year. In fact, the second week of the season, they will meet at Clemson. That's number 39. Tony Lazera, and he'll kick to 24, Quincy Davis, or Eric Franklin, 85, back deep. So we'll see how early in the game turnovers become a factor. The first of three, a triple header, as our Capital One Bowl Week gets underway here on ESPN. There you see the wind direction, and it's Quincy Davis. Dancing and going east to west. Spins, dashes up near the 27, and that's where the Bulldogs will start. For the first time all year, the defensive coordinator starts a 3-4 defense. And they're going to roll this front three with nine different guys every few plays to try to keep that front fresh. The linebackers led by Chad Carson. John Leak, really a safety linebacker type player. They're going to roll with five defensive backs to begin with. Braxton Williams comes in as the nickelback. 
So they'll spot the ball and good luck finding it near the 27 yard line. McCown sets the team down. Day got wide top of your screen from the shotgun. Incomplete up near the 32 yard line looking for number 89 Major Richmond who came in with eight catches. You take a look at Louisiana Tech Stark big number 86 Curry expected to have a big game and Dag will be the favorite receiver. Tech's offensive line Sean Murph the big junior 6'4 282 the marketing major from St. Paul's High School in Covington Louisiana Stark out wide to the left. Tech looks at second and ten from their own 27. Big hole left side as Richard and Murph opened it up for Joe Smith. Four rushing touchdowns for the gunslinger out of Jacksonville High School in Jacksonville, Texas. Played for Danny Long and the Indians back there. All state. 28 touchdowns and 14 interceptions. They'll measure for the first down. Snow has changed now to light rain. And as you mentioned, Jim, Clemson changing their defense from a 4-3 to a 3-3 to try to stop the passing attack of Louisiana Tech. But now that they're not going to pass as much with this weather, it would be interesting to see if Clemson goes back to their more traditional 4-3 what Luke has done on the season averaging over 300 yards per game in that ratio two to one touchdowns to picks Smith in the backfield on third and less than a foot one of the few times you'll see McCown up over center first down for the Bulldogs a surge behind Murph and Richard and Tom Curry the big senior Interesting, J.C., in talking to both coaches, Jack McNell and Tommy Bowden, about the bowl game and the importance. Yes, they're going to look at some younger players, but both want to go out on a winning note for the seniors. No question about it. And for Louisiana Tech, this is a big game for them. This is the first time they've been on national television. This is their opportunity to show the world what Louisiana Tech is all about. Just across the 40, Smith stays in the backfield. the ball to him and Joe barrels up across the 45 near the 47 yard line chased out by Kevin Johnson Reggie Herring the defensive coordinator for the Clemson Tigers told us last night the plan is there is no plan we're going to mix it up just cut your losses one of the things he's afraid of though the screen pass because Louisiana Tech does a, a good job with it that's why they went to this 3-4 type of defense to get smaller, more fast uh, guys on the field, but it's going to hurt them against the run. Day flanked wide top of the screen. Tech looks at second and four, and the audible by McCown. First down inside the 25-yard line. That's Alan Stark. One of the things Conroy Hines told us last night, the offensive coordinator, he needs four or five plays of 30 yards or more. And Stark is their downfield receiver, but watch the free safety number 40. He sets too short, and Stark runs the skinny post and gets right behind that free safety. The cornerback is expecting help from the free safety. Athlete's more of a tackling safety that gets caught up in the line of scrimmage. 28 yards on that completion to Stark possession for Louisiana Tech and the quick out DJ Curry dives down inside the 15 yard line in the grasp of John Leak out of Plano East High School in Plano Texas and this is why they're so worried about this screen because they just get the ball to Curry and Curry's a fast quick guy they just want to give him the ball and let him use his athletic ability Curry came in 52 catches 756 yards eight touchdowns averaging about 14 and a half yards per he's also scored one rushing touchdown use him out of the backfield with that great speed out of Spring Hill High School Spring Hill Louisiana Smith in the backfield Good penetration that time by the 3-4 defense of Reggie Herring. 
Joe Von Bush, 95. Mo Fountain, 99. What about changing to a 3-4 after you played the 4-3 all year and in conditions like this? I mean, you're giving some young players some new assignments in a short week. It's going to be tough for them. You can expect some blown coverages, especially with all the things that Tech does offensively. When you're trying to play a brand new defense, you've got guys dropping that aren't accustomed to dropping, and some things can really get mixed up defensively. Spotted at the 12, second and eight. Misfiring, looking in the direction of Harris, number 82, Ahmad Harris, out of Jones Community College, the physical therapy major in Baton Rouge. He went to University High School there. He came in with 24 catches and four touchdowns. What Louisiana Tech has done inside the 20, inside the red zone. They've been amazing in the red zone, as you see, 44 of 47 times. Normally, when they get to the red zone, they're putting points on the board. Using up a lot of time, the first possession after taking the opening kickoff. Harris wide to the left. Smith, Simon in the backfield. Third and eight. McCown. Almost intercepted. Deflected at the 15-yard line. Good pursuit that time. Intended for dig number nine, the flanker back. This is what they want. They want to get guys out to stop these screen passes. You see, Lee does a good job taking on the tackle and just getting right in the passing lane. That was the biggest concern for Clemson coming in. How were they going to stop these quick screens of La Tech? And they've done a good job this first series. So the spot will be in the vicinity of the snowy 20-yard line out of the hold of Maxi Causey. This is Josh Scobie. His longest is 48. And between the 20 and 29 on the season, he's been perfect. Seven for seven. Bulldogs are on the board first. They came in a six and a half point underdog, but they took the first possession. Didn't relinquish the ball. How important the first points when you're a six and a half point underdog? Well, not just because of their underdogs, but they're coming in. It's a big momentum and confidence builder for Tech. They know now that they can drive the ball on Clemson. Clemson, of course, a nationally known program. Louisiana Tech wants to come in and make the statement about not only their program, but this team that they can line up against anyone in the country and be successful. What Jack McNell has done since taking over the fortunes of the Bulldogs. Of course, he uh, was the offensive coordinator for Gary Crook. Gary left for the Chicago Bears and eventually BYU. One of the things Jack was uh, joking about yesterday after the walkthrough of the hotel was he's now giving his offensive coordinator as much grief as Gary Crook gave to him. And he said that Gary Crook is the luckiest man in America. He's got the best job in America. Well, that was a good offensive series for him because they found out what they can do. They, they're not accustomed to this weather. The timing is going to be different on their routes. Scooped up at the eight-yard line, Ryan Mance chased out of bounds for the first possession for the Clemson Tigers. Woody Danzler, number one. And we talked about all the scoring records that he enjoys. 30 passing records for the Clemson Tigers and the backs and receivers. It was funny watching these kids warm up the other day. They were going through their ritual. First time they played on this kind of a surface in about three years, they all thought they were faster. The turf actually does give you the feel that you're faster and quicker. Rampert behind Brantley and T.J. Watkins. Let's take a look at the offensive line of the Tigers. We mentioned Kyle Young, big graduate from Daniel High School back in Clemson. How about the defense? For La Tech, the defensive line, big Jamie Nichols in the middle, the guy that really has got to get some push up front. Matt Bailey wide to the left, spotted at the 31. Near the 48-yard line goes, or the 38-yard line goes, Roscoe Crosby. 
Linebackers for Louisiana Tech really got the hat on them today, trying to contain Woody Danzler. Marshall, probably the best linebacker of the group. Secondary led by Bobby Gray, all first team whack player, real good defensive back, especially tackling. Danzler practice said he's a step faster on this blue astroturf. From the 37. Quarterback draw. That's a design play. Woody takes it up near the 42 in the grasp of Bobby Gray, number 19. He's all whack first team. Skipped the draft last year in the NFL to play his senior year at Louisiana Tech. As you said, Jim, that was a design play. They've got a whole run package for Woody Danzler. When he gets the ball, it's like the, the single wing. He's a tailback also, and they've got a whole run package geared just for him. Second and five from the 42. Robinson wide left, Rambert in the backfield. Derek Hamilton. First man missed, out of bounds, inside Bulldog territory at the 48, bumped out by Jerome Wallace, number 41, the junior out of Farmersville High School. They just want to get the ball in Hamilton's hands. Very quick guy, really one of their big play guys. You see he's making guys miss out there. This also is going to keep this defense honest. They can't get up the field if the reverse possibility is there. Last night, Brad Scott, the offensive coordinator, said Derek Hamilton is as nifty a runner as he's been around in college football. Says he'll stop on a dime and give you nine cents change. Dantzler. Drop at the 42. You're going to see that a lot today, given the conditions. Jackie Robinson out of Orangeburg, South Carolina, came in with seven catches, no touchdowns, averaging about 11.7 per catch. The junior out of South Carolina. And you see him looking at his hands coming back to the huddle. That's because he's not accustomed to playing in this weather. You've got to really focus and concentrate on catching the ball, but when your fingers get cold and numb, it really throws the field off. Second and ten. Ball just across the 47-yard line of the Bulldogs. Dantzler drops it, picks it up. Maybe gets back to the original line of scrimmage in the grasp of Carlin Thomas, the first of the Bulldogs to get there, number 92. Started seven games for Jack Picknell. Missed four because of injury this year. And this weather's not only going to affect the receivers, it's going to affect both quarterbacks because they've got to catch the ball. They're lining up in the shotgun formation, so they've got to catch the ball, and their hands are cold, and the ball is slippery and wet. And when it's in weather like this, it's harder also, Jim. I was going to say, slippery, wet, and hard, and cold. Third and 11, loss of a yard. Dantzler pulls it back down. That's what he does so well. Makes people miss. Hammered hard out of bounds. First to get there was Chris Marshall out of Callaway High School in Jackson, Mississippi, the 230-pound junior. Watch Dantzler and how he makes people miss. A great pursuit by Louisiana Tech. See, there's guys all around him. They don't give him a chance to set up and look downfield. That's what this defense does. It's predicated on speed. They want to get to the quarterback as much as possible. Win cop number 32 is the punter, averaging just over 39 yards per boot, 39.3 to be exact. John Simon is back deep. None blocked. Cop so far this year. Six inside the 20 and nine touchbacks. Simon says, everybody get away from it. Simon says, and they do. When we come back, the Bulldogs ball. They lead 3-0 on a 29-yard field goal by Josh Stobie. exclusive presentation of the 2001 Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl is presented by Crucial.com. The memory experts. You need more memory, my friend. And in part by McDonald's. We love to see you smile. ESPN's Capital One Bowl Week continues a triple header today here in Boise, Idaho. We've got a 3-0 Louisiana Tech lead over the Tigers of Clemson, who have a lot more to lose in this game, J.C. Pearson, than they do by winning. They're the national, nationally known program. They don't even really feel like Louisiana Tech should be playing with them, and that's why Tech has a chip on their shoulder. Joe Smith 
did that all by himself across the 20 near the 22 in the grasp of Ari Meekins down on the sideline. Here's Heather again. Well, Jim, fifth-year senior Alan Stark, who's the Bulldogs' top deep threat, separated his shoulder on his last reception. He's in the locker room. Questionable whether or not he will return. Look for number 82 out there, Ahmad Harris, in his place. He was recruited by San Jose State, by Boise State, and by Kansas State. Opted for Louisiana Tech. Harris is in, 82. Second and seven, spotted at the 22. Interesting, you saw the defensive surge by Clemson. In talking to Conrad Hines, the offensive coordinator last night, he said they're either sending seven or eight or they're going to play possum and lay back. They're going to zone blitz, and they've got a number of different ways to do it, but you see the outside backers come, and the ends are dropping. They're going to try to get to McCown before he can throw the ball and figure out who is coming and who isn't. They're going to try to mix it up quite a bit and keep him off balance. Wide to the left, number nine. Smith in the backfield. McCown looks at third and seven from his own 22. Almost a misread in the general direction of Curry. Number 82, Harris went deep. Might have been the uh, in the mind of McCown there. But that route is going to be open pretty much all day. Even though they're zone blitzing, they're always bringing those outside backers slash defensive backs and the ends are dropping to the flat. That's a long ways for those big guys to come. So those slot receivers should have a lot of room in the flat to work. That's Derek Hamilton back deep and that is the sophomore Dustin Upton averaging just under 42 yards a punt 57 on the season with one block. Off the side of his foot slithers and is finally down just across the 50. So excellent field position. The Clemson Tigers trying to go home for the holidays with a 7-5 and five record, but they trail by three. Ohio State, South Carolina, the Outback Bowl, 11 a.m. New Year's Day on ESPN. Auburn. It all starts at 7 7.30 Eastern time as the third game of today's triple header. North Carolina a two-point favorite. And of course Louisiana Tech gave Auburn all they wanted and more earlier this year. Woody under pressure gets it off complete to Rambert. Excellent defense that time by the Bulldogs. Clemson just tries to run the screen because Louisiana Tech is getting up the field so fast. The way to slow that down is to try to run some screens behind him, but Chris Marshall, their best linebacker, snuffs it out. Loss of about a half a yard. Matt Bailey wide to the left side. The audible by Danzler. it up near the 46 yard line of the Bulldogs. Jerome Wallace the first to arrive number 41 helped out by Bobby Gray the senior. Jim you mentioned the audible by Woody Danzler. They never huddle so he gets the play call from the sideline as you see him here as play is stopped. He's going to get the play but watch him about the 17 second mark on the play clock he looks to the sidelines again all the audibles come from the sideline to Woody Danzler so he looks every play about 17 seconds to the sideline to see if they want to change the play you can see Bobby Gray leaving under his own power there hobbling around the senior I mentioned that he skipped the NFL draft last year to play his senior year he had two interceptions this season one against UTEP and one against Kansas State earlier. That will be a major loss 
Three forced fumbles, four fumble recoveries. We are live at the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. Heather Cox on the sideline and former Kansas City Chief J.C. Pearson alongside. And former Washington Husky. You never had weather like this up there at Husky Stadium, did you? Not in Washington, but I did play in this kind of weather in the league, and I hated it. <laughs> Third and six. Woody pulls it down, gets the first down, cracks it across the 30 and keeps on churning. Inside the 25 of the Bulldogs, Jason Olford finally wrestled him to the ground. His blockers caught up with him. Just a design play. This is a run off tackle as though he was a tailback, and you can see a lot of room. But watch the tackling by Louisiana Tech. You've got to wrap this guy up. He's, they call him the best tailback in the ACC. He just happens to take the snap from center. Jackie Robinson wide to the left. Rampart stays in the backfield. Nothing doing at the 25-yard line. Quincy Myers, number 91, the junior out of Huntington High School back in Shreveport. Talking to the Louisiana Tech coaches before this morning, they said it was colder at the Shreveport Airport than it was when they got here to practice. But that was before today. You can see the line up front. They've got to get Rambert involved in the game to take some of the pressure off of Danzler. And that's what Zachary brought to this team. He brought another weapon. misdirection and the flare and the first down the ball is dropped out of bounds but it's still the possession of the Tigers number 84 JJ McKelvey the junior out of Berkeley High School in Monk's Corner South Carolina and that's Clemson's version of the quick screen they just want to get the ball out to these fast wide receivers and allow those guys to make a play on the outside Another Bulldog is down. That's number 41, 40. Chris Marshall. And that also would be a big loss for this Tech defense. Chris Marshall, probably their best linebacker because he runs so well, and that's what they're going to need today to try to contain Woody Danzler. A lot of speed on the sidelines. Let's see if he just hit some of the uh, advertising over there. Tangled up with the chain. We kind of expect to see a lot of screens and draws from the Clemson Tigers because their offensive coordinator, Brad Scott, was saying, well, it was kind of a compliment and then a non-compliment. He really appreciates how hard the defense of Louisiana Tech plays, but say they, they do sell out on the run a little bit fast, huh? And they have to because they're a bit undersized, so they've got to rely on speed and quickness to try to jump through some gaps and get up the field, but that leaves them susceptible to the screen. Surging ahead behind Kyle Young, Will Merritt, and T.G. Watkins goes Woody Dantzler. First down for Clemson. That's what Clemson should be able to do. They've got some big, strong linemen, especially those three inside, Young, Watkins, and Merritt. Those guys all squat over 600 pounds, so a lot of leg drive inside against this undersized defensive line. number 36 out of Dallas Christian High School back in Mesquite, Texas, the first Bulldog to get there. Forty-one tackles on the season for the finance major, one fumble recovery, one interception, just a junior, and he started all 11 games for Jack Bicknell. Crosby wide to the left. Play action fake. Woody pulls it back down. Fires in the end zone. Touchdown Clemson to Matt Bailey. His second touchdown this year. Great heads up play by Woody Danzler. This is why this guy is so tough. They run the bootleg. He 
just outruns the contain right here. Everybody's thinking run, but he keeps his eyes upfield. You can see right before he passes the line of scrimmage, he throws the ball for a touchdown. You can see he's going to take a shot right here. That's what you've got to do with a guy like Woody Danzler. You've got to let him know that you're there. But he comes up with the big touchdown pass. Aaron Hunt, 38 of 39 on point after so far this year. So a 10-yard scoring strike from Woody to number 82, Pat Bailey, his second touchdown reception of the year. The Tigers take the lead for the first time. Name his agent confirming that Willingham has accepted a six-year deal reportedly worth between two and three million dollars per year. There will be a news conference either later this afternoon or on Tuesday. Ty was still in the Bay Area this morning. Let's get you back out now to the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. Thank you, Reese. Another Whittingham in the news in the Salt Lake papers. We'll tell you about that in a second. At the 10-yard line, Eric Franklin. Big hole. One man to beat. Great return across midfield, down at the 46-yard line, and the kicker, Tony Lazera, saved the touchdown. Huge hole at the 25-yard line. Great job by the specialty teams for Louisiana Tech. And that's big for Louisiana Tech. They haven't returned a kickoff for a touchdown in over 500 chances, so that's something that they are are not accustomed to doing, but they really need it today because special teams is going to be key in this ball game. Gordon Reese is the referee. A 43-yard return, but a flag to be checked out. That ball, personal foul on Louisiana Tech. 15 yards from the end of the run. It will be first down and 10. So after that 43-yard return by Eric Franklin, 15 yards the wrong way if you're Jack McNell and the Bulldogs after the great return. Well, we talked about the other Whittingham, Kyle Whittingham, the defensive coordinator for the Utes of Utah and head coach Ron McBride, rumored prominently to be a job searching and perhaps a candidate to go to BYU, his alma mater. Bulldogs trailing by four. scrimmage that 3-4 defense of Reggie Herring starting to make some adjustments. Down on the sideline, we check in with Heather Cox again. Jim, senior safety Bobby Gray is a player who coaches say could be playing on Sundays, but right now he's not going to be playing for the Bulldogs. Has a sprained left MCL. They have fitted him with a brace. He tested it, thought he could go in this series, but now they're going to ice it, give it a little bit more time. He's a player that the coaches said needs to be on the field throughout this game. With his three forced fumbles and 102 tackles coming into this game and two picks. Second and ten from the 38. Screens it on out, Ding! First down, inside the 45. Kevin Johnson got there first, number 27, the 190-pound sophomore out of Orangeburg, South Carolina. Just a simple cross and wide open. And they're going to be able to find some holes in this defense because, as I said, there's zone blitzing. This time, the nose guard doesn't drop out like he's supposed to. There's nobody underneath in the middle of the field. That's going to be an easy throw and catch for McCown all game long that Reggie Herring was concerned about the effectiveness of McCown when he gets outside the pocket, how well he improvises, and the ability of the Bulldogs to simply move the first down chain. Joe Smith in the backfield. Gets the call, breaks a couple of tackles behind the blocking of Richard and Burke. Charles Capley, number 40, out of Ely High School in Pompano Beach, Florida. The first of the Tigers to get there. We're seeing a lot of missed tackles, Jim, and that's because of the weather. Again, it also affects defensive players because when your body's cold, you're a little tentative. You're not really as aggressive as you normally would be, so instead of going up and really wrapping up the ball carrier, we're seeing a lot of arm tackles. Dig wide to the left. Smith stays in the backfield, second and five. at the 47-yard line. With three sacks on the year now, Rodney Thomas out of West Lawrence High School in 
Caswell, Georgia, the junior. And they're able to get pressure on McCown. Louisiana Tech hasn't figured out this blitz zone scheme yet. Rodney Thomas does a good job of coming up and wrapping up McCown. The recreation management major, just a junior and a key part of that defense, albeit a defense that's changing. Wouldn't be surprised to see the Tigers start next year with that 3-4 if Herring sees the adjustments he likes here. Huh? It's, it's working so far. They've got some athletic guys on the field. More speed, and that's what defenses need these days. A lot of speed. McCown dumps it off. John Simon out of the backfield. again on the hit. And again, there's going to be a lot of room inside for Curry and Simon to work because these defensive linemen aren't accustomed to dropping. That's the problem with this new zone blitz scheme for Clemson. You've got to have defensive linemen who know where to drop and then what to do once they get there. Dustin Upton again averaging about 42 yards per kick. Derek Hamilton is back deep, number 21. First one slithered off his foot, but as JC pointed out, the football is cold, damp, and hard. This one more like his average for the sophomore. Out of bounds to the near sideline. A 7-3 Clemson lead. 2:48 left to go in quarter number one. Capital One Bowl week continues. When we're done here this afternoon, it's the Axel Liberty Bowl from Memphis. Brandon Doman, the Mountain West champion BYU Cougars, taking on Dave Ragone. And the Conference USA champion Louisville Cardinals at 4 o'clock Eastern time. All part of Capital One Bowl week. Cardinals are a three-point pick over BYU. Of course, they're missing Luke, huh? And that's a big piece to that BYU offense. Luke Staley really was the man for him. Tommy Bowden in his third year as the head man of Clemson. Spotted at the Tigers' 18-yard line. Dantzler backpedals. Deepest throw of the game. Incomplete at the 45-yard line looking for J.J. McKelvey. He's their deep threat, and they're going to take a few shots. They're going to take four or five shots downfield, especially to McKelvey. He's a guy that really comes up with a big play. He's not real fast, not a burner, but for some reason, they say he can come up with a big play on the go routes better than any other receiver they have. Crosby wide to the left, Rambert in the backfield on second and ten. Motion over on the right side by number 71, Derek Brantley. Just a little too quick by Brantley. Before the snap, they'll start offense. Five yards previous spot. Still second down. Last time that the Clemson Tigers played in snow was back in 1936. They lost out to Furman that day, 12 to nothing. It's a long time without playing in snow. And you can see penalties have, have really hurt Clemson some this year, over 75 yards per game in penalties. And you just can't do that because you shoot yourself in the foot. Dantzler out of the pocket, throws it down at the shoe tops, incomplete at the 18-yard line. Matt Bailey would have made a fishnet. How do you stay warm on a day like this? You stay right in front of those heaters <laughs> like those La Tech players are. I tell you, when I played in this weather, as soon as I came off the field, I ran straight to those heaters. You know, Jim, you're going to see Louisiana Tech blitzing a lot from Woody Danzler's right side, the defensive left side, because they feel like he's most dangerous when he goes to his right because he likes to throw from that side. They're going to try to force him to go the other way. Third and 15, if the Bulldogs can hold, they'll enjoy great field position. In the back. Field near the 10 yard line. Carlin Thomas, number 92, out of Faraday High School in Faraday, Louisiana, with the sack. That's big for Louisiana Tech. They've only had 22 sacks on the entire season. You see, Thomas does a good job getting up the field and then falling back off to get on Danzler. That's what they've got to do. They've got to make Danzler feel the pressure and not let him escape outside. Step up inside where the pursuit can get him. One fumble recovery. 32 yards for a touchdown, his first score against Oklahoma State for Carlin Thomas. Good scoop by Cop. This one more of a line drive variety. At midfield is John Simon. Looks for anybody in blue numbers. And about 
a three yard return. Well, the snow has stopped, light rain down on the sideline. Heather, how cold is it? Oh, it's a little bit chilly down here, but fun nonetheless. I am joined by Mike Boken, general manager of Crucial.com. And in light of the tragedies of September 11th, it seems that the, the purpose of the humanitarian bowl and Crucial's involvement has never resonated so clearly. That's true. We've been involved for three years, Heather, and, and this year has special meaning because of everything our country has gone through. The bowl has always stood for the humanitarian field, but this year, obviously, countrywide has special meaning for us. This is your third year being involved. How rewarding has it been? It's been great. Our employees get very involved. Micron, our, our parent company, their employees get involved as well. And it's been beneficial to us both on a humanitarian side and certainly exposure for Crucial.com. All right, Mike, enjoy the game and stay warm. Okay, thank you. At midfield, nothing doing. La Tech stymied. They trail by four, 134 and counting quarter number one. So after that 38-yard punt and a three-yard return, John Smith trying to get warm. Two southern schools traveling about 35 or 2,500 miles awoke to a snowstorm here in downtown Boise. They got wide to the left side at second and 13. Caught near the 42 by Stark, who's back in there. Again, he came in with 25 catches, 380 yards, and averaging about 15 yards per reception. Ryan Mance for the Tigers out of Manning High School in South Carolina, the junior with the stop defensively for Clemson. You can see all the players offensively and defensively looking to the sidelines for the play and the coverage. Louisiana Tech also doesn't huddle, so all the plays come in from the sideline. Drive 61 yards, only 29 cents. Off that first drive, a 29 yard Josh Scobie field goal. Incomplete, too hard at the 35 yard line, looking for DJ Curry, just a little loop out of the backfield. If he catches that ball, he's still running. Meekins is playing in coverage and he falls down. You see Meekins right there, he slips down. If they're a little more patient and get that ball to Curry, who's their fastest receiver and very quick. That could have been six points. Got to take a little off the softball or off the fastball in weather like this, don't you? And you know, that's the problem with big, strong quarterbacks. They've got to work on their touch. As you said, you've got to take a little bit off of it in weather like this. Dustin Upton from his own 48. Hangs a beauty. Hamilton watches it bounce at the goal line. Did it go in? like the ball may have crossed the line at the end, but La Tech still gets the benefit of the doubt. Good job. If he takes that ball into the end zone with him, it's a touchback. You see those guys doing a great job of just knocking it back. Corey Brazil was the last of the Bulldogs to get there, so as they say in the shadow of his own end zone, Dantzler to Rambert. Blocking over on that right side by Will Merritt and Gary Bird. You don't want to turn over this deep. You sure don't, but defensively, you want to try to get a quick stop. Dantzler, a 10-yard scoring strike to Matt Bailey after the field goal. A four-point lead for the Tigers after one. The 2002 ESPN Sports Almanac in bookstores now. You are a cyber jock. You bid on memorabilia. You're addicted to fantasy football. You outscore your kids in the sports PC game. You need more memory, tough guy. Fantasy freeze up. Don't let your system slow you down. And there's Danzler backed up deep, looking at second and three from his own eight-yard line. Scrambling to his left. Cracks it across the 15. Now our ESPN game track. Louisiana Tech comes down on their first 
series and ends up with a 29-yard field goal by Scobie. But then Woody Danzler gets an opportunity. He really started to get it going on the ground, which led to their first touchdown. It looks like a run right here, but Danzler just pulls up and throws a 10-yard touchdown to Bailey. So after picking up the first down, Woody gets behind his center, Kyle Young. Interesting to see him scramble out to the left because that's what Tom Masella wanted to do. The Bulldog defensive coordinator thought the problem was when he got out to the right. Pitch back. Rambert. First down at the 32. Jason Olford chased him out of bounds out of Lufkin High School where he played for John Outlaw. Watch Danzler. Great decision. Waits till the last second to pitch the ball out to Rambert. And Rambert is a guy that's got some ability, even though he wasn't the starter all year. He's played the last few games for Clemson and has played virtually the entire game, the last two bowl games for him. He's a guy that really runs better than he catches. Prior to that run, his longest of the season was 16 yards, averaging about four and a half yards per carry. This drive started back at the Tigers' one. Side coverage. Looking downfield for J.J. McElvey. Back there in the coverage, Willie Shepard was with him step for step. Great job of coverage by Willie Shepard. Never panicked the entire time. McKelvey, that's their deep guy. He's going to go downfield four or five times a game. Shepard does a great job. Watch, there's no panic by him right here. He's watching the ball the entire way. And whenever you have your head around looking at the ball, the majority of times you're not going to get a pass interference call. 28 catches on the year, averaging 14 yards per catch for number 84. Woody gets hammered first to get there. Antonio Crow, the big sophomore. Very good play by Louisiana Tech. You see Crow's just spying Danzler. He's just waiting in the middle of the field following Danzler. Slams them pretty hard there. Another thing about playing on this turf, especially when it gets hard in cold weather, when they're slamming guys down around there, you're susceptible to banging your head around getting some concussions. Rambert in the backfield from the shotgun. Dantzler. Third and 12. Flares it out of the backfield. First down for Clemson. Rambert. Just his seventh catch of the year. John Nash was, as they say, in the vicinity. They caught Louisiana Tech playing man coverage, which they haven't done very much today. You can see Nash, he's looking at the quarterback. Rambert runs right by him for a big game. They don't play a lot of man coverage for that reason right there. They want those corners to be able to see the ball and come up and help on the tackle. Jasmine in the backfield. Not much doing. The middle clogged up as they approach midfield. Good job by that defensive front. Avance, Nichols, Ellsworth, and Carlin Thomas. Thomas has had a great game so far. This defense, Louisiana Tech also goes from a 4-3 to a 3-4 this season, and it's really helped Randall and Thomas. Those guys are only about 230 pounds. They were defensive ends last year, having to take on these big offensive tackles, getting blown off the ball. This year, they don't have to do that. Jasmine, number 10, stays in the backfield for the Clemson Packers on second and seven. Down around the shoe tops, looking for McElvey again. Not a real good throw by Danzler. Just a quick stop outside. He's got to make this throw. It's a little too low. It's still a catchable ball, but a little too low. If he throws that higher, it's an easy catch for McKelvey and a first down. Woody knows it. My fault. My fault. Third and eight. He'll make you miss. And miss again. That was all Woody Dancer. Finally, Clint Ellsworth made the hit. You've got to wrap this guy up. That's the, this is the Woody factor. 
makes plays out of nothing. You can see him. He shakes that guy. And then watch him. Look how many guys he makes miss right there. Three guys tackle themselves. All blue jerseys. Dazzler's downfield. You've got to wrap him up because they said he's probably the best of running back in the entire ACC, even though he's the quarterback. First drive, three yards. Since then, over 100 yards and a four-point Tiger lead. Clemson takes a timeout. They're four and four in the ACC, trying to go home with a seven and five record. You. Sanitarian Bowl. A lot of tailgating this morning. It was breakfast and brunch for a lot of those folks. And I think more than a few Bloody Marys, huh? Trying to stay warm. Fourth and two for the Clemson Tigers, nursing that four point lead out of the eye pro set with Rembert and Jasmine. Dantzler bends in behind Kyle Young, his senior center, and the audible. Checking off. Jim, that means these guys are fired up and they're ready. That ball offsides on the defense. First down. Great drive by Woody Dantzler in the cage. Watch the hard count right here. He audibles and then he gives them the hard count. And then the center, Kyle Young, just snaps it as soon as they get someone offside. Pro actually put his right hand down on Kyle Young, the center. So the cadence and the rhythm of the senior quarterback, Woody Dantzler. Crosby wide to the left. First and ten for the Tigers, nursing at four-point lead. Razzle-dazzle, the end around. That's Matt Bailey. And the turnover. Quincy Davis had two interceptions on the year. Out of Starkville. Back in Mississippi after the end around. And he does a great job of minding his own business. They run a double fit, double reverse. But you see Davis, he doesn't buy it. He plays the football, does a great job. But it's very easy for him to think double reverse and run the opposite way. And that's what Clemson was hoping for. But Davis does a great job of just staying home, minding his own business and doing his job. interception on the year. So McCown starts from his own 21-yard line. Stark got wide to the left side. A little flare to Dave. Dances down at about the 27-yard line. Capley on the hit, number 40 for the Clemson Tigers. Those screens are tough on the cornerbacks because when they run those quick screens, those tackles get out there quickly. That time, Damian Laverne, 331 pounds out there on Kevin Johnson, about 190 pounds. Inside, 11 and a half left in the first half. Smith in the backfield, big hole right side, blocking by Tom Curry and Damian Laverne. Mance on the hit out of Manning High School in South Carolina. What a hole on the right side. Curry opened up the big senior. Heather Cox down on the sideline. J.C. Pearson's alongside. It's Capital One Bowl Week. A triple header today on ESPN. Glad you're on board for this crucial.com humanitarian bowl. Big game for the seniors on both sides of the ball. This offensive line for Louisiana Tech, they've only allowed one sack for every 21 pass attempts. Dropped at the 35-yard line by Joe Smith. That's not the strength for Joe Smith. You can see Smith out of the backfield. You've got to make that catch. Even though you may not have a lot of room to run, you've got to catch that. He's not accustomed to catching the ball. He only, he only has seven catches all season long. John Simon is normally the guy that moves the running back when they want to try to throw the ball to a running back. The telecommunications major who went to New Mexico Military Academy. So it's second and ten for the Bulldogs, trailing by four. Just across the 41. McCown, middle's wide open, drop. 
the 48-yard line by John Simon. Going to get a personal foul call. to be checked out. Bulldogs scored first on a 29-yard ball. Personal foul on the defense. 15 yards of previous spot. Automatic first down. You can't have those kind of penalties. You want to play hard. You want to be aggressive. But you've got to be smart. Watch at the end of the play. The play's way over. There comes J.J. Howard. You can't do that. You've got to be a much smarter player. Take a listen. A good two and a half seconds after the play's over. Sophomore mistake, the defensive end, 6'3", 220 out of Huger, South Carolina. Huge first down for the Bulldogs. Another nice hole running behind Randy Richard and Michael Gilmore for Joe Smith. You, know, you can't sleep on Joe Smith. Everybody thinks that Louisiana Tech is just all passing. Joe Smith, second team, all whack. Over 800 yards rushing, so this guy's got some ability to run the ball. You can't sleep on him. You know, talking to Conrad Hines about this kind of David against Goliath theory, the fact that Clemson, the big ACC powerhouse, and poor Louisiana Tech from Ruston, Louisiana, only 11,000 enrolled there. Conrad said, you know what? Our kids love it. Our kids thrive on that. And they take it as a challenge, and that's why they're approaching this game as a way to put Louisiana Tech on the map with the big time. John Simon, kind of like catch and release twice. Inside the 25, Jovan Bush, 95, the first Tiger to get there. John Simon is a big part of this offense, running the ball as well as catching the ball. He's a guy that does everything for him. He's even thrown a couple touchdowns. You can see he goes in motion and then just runs the quick screen, but watch after he gets the ball in his hands. Look how many guys he makes miss, and that's why they want to get these guys the ball in their hands quickly and let their ability take over for him. Simon is a guy who's played some running back. As I said earlier, they just want to get him some mismatches on the linebacker. Whether it's been as a running back or as a receiver, he's been their go-to guy. And again, inside the 14-yard line, that time it was Delwyn Day. Mentioned that he missed the K-State game and the Tulsa game because of a hand injury. Is going to play some soft coverages. They just don't want to get beat deep. They struggled in the secondary all year long, giving up big plays. So they're going to stay deep and give Louisiana Tech a lot of underneath routes. Numbers in the first half on the gunslinger. Sophomore quarterback, 6'4. Jack McNeil will have him for two more years. All over the right side, opened up by Tom Curry for Joe Smith. An interesting story, number 77, the right guard. He originally signed on with Pitt, then took a year to go to New Mexico Military Academy again. Former All-State performer who was offense and defense for Highland High School back in Tarrantown, Pennsylvania. There is Curry, the big senior guard. Fulfilling one of his dreams today. His dream, like a lot of his teammates, were to play in a bowl game, and they got that opportunity this year. John Leak out of Ray Plano East High School in Plano, Texas. Leak is another good story. I mean, they love him. Reggie Harry said, this guy has got a great vertical leap. He's got great speed. They can use him on the corner, at safety, and at linebacker. And he's got 121 tackles on the season. The interesting thing is last year, he did not play one single down of defense. So he's had a tremendous season. One of their most valuable players. Stark wide to the left. Second and nine for Luke McCown. Looks left, middle's open. Batted down. Chad Carson. One interception, one forced fumble, three sack on the year. Watch 46 get those big. What a wingspan for 6'3. Huh? He's the leader of this defense. Leads him in tackles, but he's a smart player just reading McCown. He's got a 3.94 GPA in biological sciences. You know, Clemson's got seven graduate players starting for them. I mean, they've got a great academic program at Clemson. 12th play of the 
drive coming up. What a move by Luke McCown. He looked like Woody on the other side of the ball, didn't he? And caught Clemson totally by surprise. He's a guy that doesn't normally run the ball. He's only got 144 yards rushing all season long. But he does a great job of pulling it down. That's something they want him to do more of. Watch him pick up Rodney Thomas, 41, and then John Lee, 45. You can see nothing's open. And that's what they teach you as a defensive player. Stay to the ground. McCown just gives them a pump fake, and everybody goes up like they're going to block a shot in basketball. He just runs around them. you got to stay on the ground and run through the guy. Josh Scobie adds the point after, after that scamper by Luke McCown. They said sometimes, the coaches said, Luke, predetermined situations. He sees things that are not really there that time. 2001 Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl is brought to you by Nissan, Rivet, and by Capital One. Proud sponsor of the Capital One Florida Citrus Bowl on January 1st. Cox down on the chilly sidelines. Josh Kobe started the scoring as we got underway at our Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl, a 29-yard field goal. His extra point after that 11-yard touchdown scamper by Luke McCown, and the Bulldogs are back on top. After an unsportsmanlike penalty celebration after the uh, touchdown, Ryan Mance gets hammered. I mean, just cemented at the 42-yard line. Now, that's the way you cover a kick right there. When you're covering kicks, you've got to have total disregard for your body. It's just an attitude. You want to go down there and hit somebody. And watch Davis at the end right there. He doesn't slow down whatsoever. He runs right through the ball carry. That's great special teams coverage. It was all set up because look at Scobie. He doesn't have traction on his foot. He falls down on the kick. From the 43-yard line, Woody Densler. Locking up front by Will Merritt and Kyle Young for Bernard Rembert. Yeah, that's going to be key in this ball game also. As it, the temperature continues to drop, this field is going to start to ice up. And the traction and footing is going to be key for these guys. We saw Scobie just slip and fall down. You've got to make sure that you're not wearing the basketball shoe like a lot of people like to wear on turf. You've got to have some spikes down there. Or Velcro. <laughs> Second and seven. Woody with the leg kick. Gets it off to Roscoe. Crosby makes everybody miss. The foot race. Count it. Direction by Dantzler and then the freshman. But the guy that makes this play is number 71, Derek Brantley. Watch his block outside on Shepard right there that allows him to get outside and just use his speed. Crosby, the guy with a lot of speed, really come on at the end of the season. But the guy that makes that play is the big tackle, Brantley. Top with the point after. Clemson retakes the lead. 54 to go before halftime. How about Roscoe Crosby, the freshman, his fourth touchdown reception. Clash with Derek Watson and the Gamecocks. Snowed under. Ohio State, South Carolina, the Outback Bowl. 11 a.m. New Year's Day on ESPN. A lot of Clemson fans have come some 2,500 miles. The uh, Clemson paw and logo so easily identifiable. As you mentioned, some tailgating fun out in the parking lot early this morning here. The sun came up late in the midst of that snowstorm. And, of course, the uh, preeminent thought, just stay warm. <laughs> Try to keep your traction. That's for sure. A lot of orange around. Lazera, 39. 
will do the kicking from the 35. It didn't take the Tigers very long, only 49 seconds after the Bulldogs had retaken the lead. It's Clemson by four, 6.54 before halftime. Much more coming up at halftime as our Capital One Bowl week continues. First of three triple headers on this New Year's Eve day on ESPN. Eric Franklin. out of Jacksonville High School, another freshman. What a hit on Franklin. We go back and take a look at the touchdown. Watch 71, Derek Brantley, the right tackle, does a great job getting outside and watch the block on Willie Shepard that allows Crosby to stay outside and use his speed to get downfield. Derek Brantley, a big guy, junior college All-American, actually redshirted last year. He's done a great job so far this year at tackle for Clemson. He's got 32 knockdowns. They keep track of knockdown blocks for Clemson. He just added one to his total. Speech and communications major, so look out. Caught and out of bounds at the 22-yard line goes Ahmad Harris out of Jones Community College and University High School back in Baton Rouge. Roscoe Crosby, by the way, after that fourth touchdown reception, 60 yards in receptions for the Tigers. This is just a smash route. One receiver short, another runs the corner, and they, that's exactly what they want. They want the flat guy to drop under the corner, and then there's an easy throw to the flat. Smith, the running back, nothing doing. You know, we talked about the defensive coordinator, Reggie Herring, going to the 3-4. It was interesting because the Bulldogs defensive coordinator, Tom Masella, did that this year, too. He went to the 3-4 after a 4-3, adapting to the more wide-open style that the Bulldogs play and see in the way. Well, the difference is Louisiana Tech ran it all season long. For Clemson, this is the first time all year that they're going to run it, so it's going to be a lot of changes for those guys. an interception but then they don't block the outside guys and McCown takes a big hit fourth punt of the afternoon well off his average Upton came in averaging about 42 yards per kick Hamilton is back deep awaits at his own 40 hangs this one high believe maybe discretion would have been the better part of valor right there no turnover though clemson on top by four 546 to go in the first half on our capital one bowl week on espn back everybody 546 to go clemson back on top tomorrow on espn as capital one bowl week wraps up a rematch of last year's outback bowl between the buckeyes and south carolina ohio state will need jonathan wells to have a big game to knock off Lou Holtz's stellar defensive club. It all starts 11 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow morning. First and 10 from the Clemson 46. Rambert made everybody miss. That was all Bernard Rambert. First down yardage after he was stopped behind the line of scrimmage, the junior. timeout as one of the Bulldogs is back down in the backfield. Jamie Nichols. Rambert, big strong guy, 200 pounds, and this is what he brings to him. You can see him breaking a lot of tackles, but not good tackling by Louisiana Tech. Nobody's wrapping up. You've got to wrap up, not only because it's cold, but because you've got a big strong guy in Rambert as well as Danzler. You've got to wrap those guys up. If not, they're going to keep running through these arm tackles. Number 94, the senior out of Philadelphia, Mississippi, helped off the field. Well, 
Well, we said we couldn't talk about the two outstanding quarterbacks enough. Six out of 11 for Woody. Luke, 10 out of 21 and rambled for one. just like a, a sweep right. They just hike it to Danzler, and now he's a tailback, and he just runs around the end. Louisiana Tech doing a good job defensively of containing Danzler. They don't want him to get outside on the edge. They want him running around inside where they have a chance to gang tackle. Tom Masala, the defensive coordinator for the Bulldogs, trying to keep him in the pocket. Likened him to Doug Flutie. Says Woody, just like Flutie, likes to agree, likes to improvise. Whistle before the snap. Really, given the conditions, it's not been bad as far as penalties. And before the snap, full start, offense. Five yards, pretty spot. Still second down. Not only that, I'm surprised that we don't have any turnovers as of yet. Normally, it's in, this, in these conditions, especially if you're not used to playing in them, the ball normally goes on the ground quite a bit. And I know last night talking to these coaches, that was a big issue for them. They were going to talk about controlling the ball, especially on this turf and in this weather. Second and 10 from the 45 of the Bulldogs. Another run by Woody Dantzler, bumped out near the 40-yard line, chased out by Michael John Lenhard. Well, what did Tommy Bowden have to say about Woody? Well, he's he's 70 some percent of our offense, so <laughs> so he's a huge part of our any success we've had. But uh, he's he's a tailback playing quarterback. And it, it does not mean when I say it, it doesn't mean to diminish his throwing skills or quarterback skills, but he's got time in both positions. Ask him about his growth last night. Tommy said Woody's ability to run the offense now, his comprehension, his ability to make quicker decisions, and how much better he's become on second and third down. Quarterback draw. Dantzler dances down near the 38-yard uh, line. Quincy Miles, who's in for Jamie Nichols, and Carlos Thomas, Carlin Thomas, for the Bulldogs. And as Coach Bowden was saying, that doesn't diminish anything from his arm strength. You know, this year he a tremendous speed, the first player ever in college football to throw for over 2,000 yards and run for over 1,000 in a single season. So, I mean, that is a tremendous accomplishment, throwing and running for Woody Dancer. Win cop the 5'9 junior putter into the Clemson Tigers. 34 and counting, approaching halftime and into the end zone. So it'll be first and 10 for the Bulldogs on their own 20-yard line when we come back to the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl in Boise. By four, drop at the 35-yard line. Wide open was Major Richmond, the tight end. He started all 11 games this year for Jack McNell. Richmond, the tight end. Not used to catching a lot of balls. He only has eight catches all year long. They don't throw to him very often, normally just in the red zone area. But for both of these offenses, when you're throwing the ball as much as they do, you have a guy in the middle of the field that can work it besides those slot guys. The tight end can be a huge factor for you. Start wide to the left, Smith in the backfield. Snow starting to pick up again here in Boise. Of course, Louisiana Tech, Gary Croton was here before he went to the Bears and before he went to BYU and the passing stats for the uh, Bulldogs. And every year, historically, for Louisiana Tech, tremendous passing numbers. And this year, no exception. Luke McCown having a tremendous season for him. Second and 15 after the penalty. Smith stays in the backfield. Clemson jumped but got back. McCown pulls it down and then is knifed down at the 15-yard line. Excellent play by Bryant McNeil. 
eight sacks on the season for the 230 pound junior number 91. You can see Luke is waiting for his guys to get open. The timing right now is a little bit off given the weather conditions. The turf is a little slippery. The timing of this passing attack is a little bit off right now. Second Tiger timeout. They lead by four. View was a tremendous accomplishment for him first year in the WAC to win the conference, but people don't realize that when they were independent, they played some of the top teams in the country, the Nebraskas, the Florida States, the Miamis, so they're used to playing a high caliber of football, and then they got, got into the WAC, and you know, the WAC really wasn't quite ready for the speed of this Louisiana Tech team. See their first conference title since back in 84, when they were in the double A, and what a turnaround from last year when they were three and nine. Great job by Jack McNell. Day. Was he inbound? Yes. First down for Louisiana Tech. Hafley was back there in the coverage along with Kevin Johnson. This is just making a play. Great job by Day. Watch him go up and make the catch right here. Doesn't matter who's around him, but hopefully the free safety, instead of playing the ball, sometimes you got to take that shot on that wide receiver. If he takes that shot on him, he probably separates him from the ball. Day says he says playing football is like a blessing as well as a privilege. 21 yards on the reception. McCown pulls it down. Long throw over the middle. Caught it midfield. Another first down for the Bulldogs. A lot of excitement here, but I know there's some excitement at halftime. Reese, what have you got? Jim got a few things brewing. The echoes are awake, and they are reverberating with the sound of a new head football coach at Notre Dame. Tyrone Willingham is on his way there. We'll check in with the game day gang. They're out there in Pasadena getting ready for the Rose Bowl, and we'll look ahead to the rest of our triple header, Liberty and Peach, coming up. See you at the half. A lot of Irish faithful excited about that new head coach. Joe Smith barrels over the middle behind Tom Curry and Sean Burke. Damian Laverne with a big block. Close to first down yard. Speaking of Tyrone Willingham, I had a chance to be with him when I was with the Vikings. Great coach. Smart play by Louisiana Tech right here. Clemson's trying to substitute. They just get up to the ball and snap it. Clemson's got too many guys on the field. Reese Davis back in the studio. Gordon Reese here is our official. So we'll check out the penalty call. This is one of the big advantages of a no huddle offense. You can get up to the line of scrimmage and snap it quickly. You see guys from Clemson, they're running on the field. No one's coming off the field, and Louisiana Tech just lines up and hikes it. It's offsides with too many guys on the field for Clemson. Reggie Herring said you'd see a 3-4 today for the first time. Sometimes you'd see a 3-3-5, a 3-2-6. He was really going to mix and match, wasn't he? Try to confuse the Bulldogs. Well, that time they tried to get 13 guys out there, and that's not going to work. Jack Bicknell says, let's run the clock and let's get our play going there. Illegal substitution on the defense. Five yards to the previous spot. Now give the Louisiana Tech a first down. Tommy Bowden said last night before he took over, Clemson's reputation was good defense, good kicking game, and don't turn the ball over. But his philosophy has been to be more aggressive. He still wants the good D and the good kicking game, but he wants his offense to be, as he put it, a little more Oklahoma-like, a little more aggressive. And he certainly has done that since he's been the head Tiger. In an ideal world, I mean, every coach would want that. Play good defense, good special teams, and have an offense that scores a lot of points. The problem is it's a lot easier said than done. Stark wide to the left. Smith in the backfield with McCown. John Lee out of Plano, Texas. The sophomore just exploded in the backfield to sack the gunslinger. Louisiana Tech hasn't figured out that they're blitzing those guys every snap off the outside. John Leak just comes untouched. He's the corner. He's the safety slash linebacker. Tremendous athlete. 121 tackles on the season. I say this guy bench presses over 400 pounds and has a 40-inch vertical leap. That is, that's huge. He needs to be playing some hoops somewhere. That man, Reggie Herring, loves that man. 
Says he does everything but show the videotape and serve the pregame meal. You can play him just about anywhere. Dropped at the 38-yard line by Joe Smith, who's going to have to put some stick -em on his hands. That's about the third one that he's dropped. Pressure again by Leak. And they're just trying to run a screen. McCown does a good job of being patient. They're trying to set up the screen. It's not there yet, so he keeps backpedaling, trying to buy time. Smith's got to catch that ball. Reggie was a three-year starter, linebacker for Florida State out of Seminole. He's in the Seminole Hall of Fame in his 19th bowl appearance, three as a player and 16 as a coach. Been at Clemson since 93. Linebacker coach for Pat Dye at Auburn for six years. Dague wide to the left. Bulldogs looking at third and be careful time. Third and 19. Again, this by Chad Carson, number 46. And Reggie Herring says Chad Carson is everything you want in a football player. Talks about his work ethic, about his attitude. Says JC he has not missed a practice, Chad Carson, in four years. Great job. They blitz eight guys right here. They play pure man in the secondary, and there's nobody to pick up Chad Carson. Just a delayed blitz, and he's untouched. Standing back at his own 40-yard line, Dustin Upton, the sophomore punter. Longest is 55 on the year. Tigers with nobody back. They down one at the one. This one will be blown dead at about the seven and a half with 19 ticks left on the clock before Reese Davis and halftime. will play it conservatively. We'll find out in a second, but a reminder that tonight at 7.30, Capital One Bowl Week continues. The Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl from Atlanta. Julius Peppers for the last time. You'll see him in a North Carolina uniform. The Tar Heels battle Auburn. 7.30 Eastern time, the third game of today's triple header. Auburn getting two points. If you're filling out your sheet, So they seesaw it back and forth after the Bulldogs led 3-0. The Tigers will take a four-point advantage in at halftime, but still 30 minutes of terrific football in the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. The Clemson Tigers, 6-5. and five. Everything to lose should they get upset by the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs, the winners of the WAC. Jack McNell's team came in 7-1, and one, the winners of the conference. What a turnaround after 3-9 and nine last year, 7-4 and four overall. Down on the sidelines, we join Heather Cox again. Coach Bowden, how much of an impact have these conditions had on the team in the first half? I really haven't seen that much of a factor either team. You know, we've stopped ourselves some penalties, but the penalties had nothing to do with the slippery field or bad weather or cold. All right, best of luck in the second half. A game of adjustments. Turnovers, not much of a factor. It's been a great first half, second half coming up. But with more on the two games left to go on ESPN, back to reasons. And three sacks the first half. Those guys have really stepped up to the challenge. So we are just about set. Second half action, the Clemson Tigers. Woody Dantzler, he has thrown for those two first half scoring strikes. And in the first half stat department in rushing yards for the Tigers, 112 yards, only 50 for Louisiana Tech. Passing yards, advantage for the Bulldogs. Third down conversions, three out of seven for the Tigers, three out of nine for the Bulldogs. We talked about the one turnover, and penalties not much of a factor for either side so far. Jim, as we always talk about, it's going to be critical to see who made what adjustments at halftime to come out and try to be more successful. Snow picking up. The kick goes out of bounds at about the 20-yard line. 14 to 10, Clemson at the intermission. But it's again a seesaw contest as the Bulldogs scored first on that 29-yard field goal by Josh Scobie. Jack Pick out of bounds by the kicking team. Offense has chose to put the ball on the 35-yard line. First down. Just a couple of seconds ago, Heather Cox with Coach Jack Bicknell. 
Thanks, Jim. Coach, you're just 30 minutes away from your first bowl win in 11 years. What did you tell the team during half? Well, I told them we're doing a real good job. The field conditions were tough in the beginning of the game, and now the field conditions seem to be getting better. I told our defense we're doing a great job. They had one big playoff, and, and uh, other than that, we did a good job. So hopefully we're going to come out and play hard and try to win this game. Best of luck in the second half. Back to the booth. Snow really picking up here as we are tucked between the Rocky Mountains and the start of the front range. 14.52 to go, a four-point deficit for the Bulldogs. Second and three, spotted just shy of the 42-yard line. Big hole over the right side. Watkins, Kyle Young, and Will Merritt doing the blocking for Rember. I think we're going to see a lot more running this second half because this rain is starting to come down and freeze. But you can see those guys up front, those three guys, Young at the center, Watkins and Merritt, doing a great job up front, opening holes straight ahead for Ramper. Spotted just shy of the 47-yard line, and that time Ramper gets chopped down. Good penetration by that 3-4 defense of Tom Masala in his third year as the defensive coordinator. We can see right off the bat, right off the bat, Clemson comes out and they want to establish the run the second half. Louisiana Tech, they've got to swell up. They're undersized in that front seven. They've got to jump around a little bit, try to get in some gaps. Dantzler, six out of 11 in the first half, 92 yards. First one to start the second half is complete at about the 42-yard line to number 82, Jackie Robinson. Good job of closing on the ball by Jason Olford, the cornerback. He's had a good year for him. He's very quick, very fast. Actually second in the whack in terms of pass breakups. Stats on Woody and that four-point advantage for the Clemson Tigers. Derek Hamilton. We talked at the very top about him stepping up as a runner. He just barely got this play off. Watch Danzler take a hit right at the end, but he stands in there, takes the shot, throws the ball downfield. Hamilton does a good job of beating pure man coverage. Michael Johnson, the defensive back, allows him inside. Big hole right over the middle as Kyle Young, Will Merritt, and Gary Bird go to work again. 59, 50, and 79, respectively. Jerome Wallace on the stop, number 41, out of Farmersville High School, back in Farmersville, Louisiana, the Soch Major. And those three linemen in the middle, Watkins, Young, and Merritt, all conference players. T.J. Watkins, honorable mention, all ACC, but those guys are strong and powerful. <laughs> Second and three inside the ten, barreling down near the six goes to Bernhard Rembert again, that experienced offensive line. And you can see those guys in the middle. A lot of starts. 39 starts for Kyle Young, but that's where the strength of this line is, right in the middle. down near the five goes Rambert again. Because one of the things Brad Scott wanted to do was control the blitz of the Bulldogs, but that offensive front, at least on this first possession for Clemson, asserting themselves very well. This is a good drive coming out of the locker room. They want to come out and establish themselves on the ground make Louisiana Tech focus on the running game, then that's going to help open up the passing game for Woody Danzler. in the backfield on second and goal. Woody wide open, his third scoring strike of the game. Ben Hall, the tight end, with his eighth catch of the season and his third touchdown out of Welford, South Carolina. Two touchdown tosses today to freshman. And that was set up by the running game. They were able to pound them all 
the way down the field. Now Tech is thinking run. Danzler rolls to the right. Everybody tries to rally to him, and then Ben Hall just sneaks back on the other side, and there's nobody around him. Those tight ends play a huge factor in the red zone. to Burns High School back in Welford, South Carolina. Keep your eye on a wide open number 87, the freshman 6'5", 240, Ben Hall. Touchdown, Clemson. You are an online trader. You live by spreadsheets, rely on real-time stock quotes, crunch financial forecasts. You need more memory, big man. Don't let your system slow you down. A memory upgrade from Crucial.com can speed up your computer so you can grab the bull market by the horns. Smoking you are an online trader. Crucial.com. The memory experts. It was our first house, and shortly before my parents' grand inspection, there was a tiny problem. I told my State Farm agent I had to get it fixed fast. When you choose State Farm's premier service claims program, there's no calling around for estimates. You just go straight to a participating contractor and they'll guarantee their work. So this is it? It's just that simple. Why well, they don't build them like this anymore? Premier service. Dantzler, the last of the freshmen. Ben Hall, his third touchdown grab of the year and the biggest lead in the game so far as we welcome you back to our Capital One Bowl week on ESPN. The first of three, two more terrific games later today, right here on the Worldwide Leader. We're going to see what Tech has in store to try to answer that touchdown by Clemson. It's going to be real important for those guys in this first series out of the locker room to come out and try to establish themselves offensively. Lazera to Quincy Davis. The 20 yard line on the sideline, Jack McNell, and with another Jack McNell, here's Heather again. By the senior Jack McNell, of course, of Boston College fame, team down right now. Any words of advice for your son at this point? But, no, no words for him. I, I just feel like if they can just hang in there, there's plenty of time. You talk about 11 minutes in the third quarter. I mean, you've got time to put up 48 points if things get going. So they just hang in there, they'll be fine. All of your years at Boston College, I'm sure you had some legendary games in the snow. Advice for the players in these type of conditions? Well, it's not too bad now. Early it was ugly and nothing you could do about it because there it, it was, was ice on it. But now it's sort of been kicked away and, and it seems like their footing is much better now. All right, Jack, best of luck to you. Thanks. Good luck in NFL Europe next season. Thank you. He owned Chestnut Hill for so many years. Used to ride horses out in Newtown, Mass. And Whalen Mass. There's Jack Jr. who remembered wa watching his dad when he was about six years old. Was it in the equipment room? Was in the practice room around the players? Personal foul, JC, after the kick, huh? And that's not the way you want to start the second half on your own 10-yard line. But that's a great way to start. John Simon explodes for first down and more. He was down. The ground cannot cause the fumble. Brian McNeil on the hit number 91 out of Swansea High School in Swansea, South Carolina. And you can see Simon's at running back right there. They get him lined up on a linebacker, which is a mismatch all day long. And he's able to run right by Rodney Thomas for a big game. You can look to see Simon lining up more at running back to try to create those mismatches. 29-yard pickup, 47 straight games with a reception for the man they call Mr. Versatility at Louisiana Tech. And it says he's been blessed with a very good career. D.J. Curry gets cemented. The sophomore out of Spring Hill High School back in Spring Hill, Louisiana, just a sophomore. Watch the hit. You better block this guy. You can see Smith, he goes in there like he's going to block him, but then he doesn't touch him. And Williams is untouched right there and just lays a shot on Curry. Those outside backers are coming every play. So if you're going to run a play like that, you better make sure you get somebody on those guys. Braxton Williams out of Dudley High School. What was that, a little J-Lo move? What was that dance? That's a little shimmy that says, hey, I'm here, baby. McCown dropped. 31 to go in the third here. We go back to the studio with Reese Davis. All right, Jim Sunbowl, Washington State, and Purdue already a 7-0 Wazoo lead. And Jason Gesser, who had the Pac-10 in passing yardage, 
looking for Mike Bush, who scored 14 points in the basketball game against UCLA last week. Now he scored six in the football game against Purdue. I don't know if he danced like that after a dunk. It's 14 0. Thank you, Reese. Slow abating, snow abating just a little bit. 10.31 left to go in the third. Third and 14. McCown wide open down the middle. Incomplete at the 32. DJ Curry had to wait on it. And that allowed Charles Hapley to close along with Eric Meekins. It's a long throw. McCown's got to put a little more steam on this. They're going to roll to the right. You can see Curry runs that out and takes it back up, but the ball just hangs up there, and Hayden's able to make a play on the ball. He's got to see that safety in the middle, and he's got to throw that more on a rope. You don't want to lay that up there. Been a fairly active afternoon for the sophomore punter, Dustin Upton. Derek Hamilton, 21, is back deep. An 11-point Clemson advantage. This one is a high, high wobbly kick. Won't turn over. Hamilton. Nice return up near the 37-yard line. Still the biggest lead of the game for either team. Tigers by 11 over the Bulldogs. From a place called Boise, we invite you to escape to a place so unexpected, a world so incredible. It has the power to ignite your imagination. Come visit the city that will capture your heart, your mind, and your soul. Here in spectacular Boise, Idaho. South Carolina, the Outback Bowl, 11 a.m. New Year's Day on ESPN. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2001 Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl is brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by 1010-220, dial it, and all calls up to 20 minutes are only 99 cents. Welcome back to the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl in snowy Boise, Idaho. An 11-point Tiger advantage as Dampler brings that effective offensive unit back onto the blue AstroTurf. Roscoe Crosby, the freshman. Incomplete, bobbled, no turnover. Tiger's ball. Almost a fumble. You hear the Bulldog fans booing a little bit. They thought that might have been a catch and a fumble out there by Crosby. Roscoe Crosby, the intended receiver. You can see right there, he never quite gets control of it. Pretty close, though. Second and ten after the drops pass. Crosby wide to the left, Rambert in the backfield. Bernard Rambert, the junior, has stepped it up a notch. Number 20, as far as his running game here this afternoon. Woody on a rope, dropped at midfield by Crosby. Two catches, 60 yards for the freshman, one for a touchdown. He drops another one. That's a catch that he's got to make. He's a guy that came in with a lot of hype, one of the best high school receivers in the country. He's battled a lot of injuries early. Really came on at the end of the season once he got healthy. He's also a good baseball player, second-round draft pick of the Kansas City Royals. So he'll be playing some baseball this summer. Third and ten after two drop passes. Woody with the audible.
just bad tackling by Louisiana Tech. And this is the Rambert factor. They have the Woody factor, but now the Rambert factor. Look at all the missed tackles. But watch number 21. Also, Hamilton sprints downfield and gives him a block at the very end that gets him into the end zone. Rambert, as we've been saying all day long, is a very strong runner. You've got to wrap him up. Louisiana Tech, just terrible tackling. And that play that allows Rambert to go all the way downfield for the touchdown. 62 yards for the junior running back. Just his seventh catch of the season. Three plays, 62 yards, 30 seconds, and four touchdown passes by number one, Densler. From America's number one personal trainer, Tony Little, comes the country's most exciting way to lose weight, the revolutionary Gazelle Freestyle. Ten cardio strength training and stretching moves in one fun-filled, calorie-burning workout with almost zero impact. I've lost 32 pounds in seven months. Being over 300 pounds, it helped me lose over 200. The Gazelle Freestyle has worked for these people and many more. Now you can try the Gazelle Freestyle before you buy. At home for 30 days for just $14.95 plus shipping and handling. Complete with onboard heart rate monitor and Tony Little's exclusive one-on-one -on -one personal trainer video. Use the system for 30 days. If you don't fall in love with it, if you don't get results from it, if you don't like me, send it back. This sensational Gazelle Freestyle $14.95 trial offer won't last long, so don't miss out. Call right now. Call now to order a Gazelle Freestyle to try in your own home for just $14.95 plus shipping and handling. Tonight in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, award-winning defensemen Julius Peppers and North Carolina collide with Jason Campbell and Auburn. He got it! Touchdown! North Carolina Auburn, the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, 7.30 tonight on ESPN. When my time on earth is gone and my activities here are passed, I want they bury me upside down and my critics can kiss my ass. Tigers said last night that they were playing for pride and playing for respect. 62 yards by the junior running back on that reception. There's what he's done on the ground today. And I mentioned about two plays before that he had stepped it up in the rushing department. He broke a bunch of tackles there. And now Clemson with an 18-point differential. Quincy Davis. Penalty flag is down. Tigers might have been offside on the kick. Well, then we've got another flag down to the other end of the field, so probably got offsetting penalties. Probably going to have to end up kicking this again. But Louisiana Tech, they've got to come out and answer Clemson. As you said, Clemson's really stepped it up the second half. And coming into the game, Tech wanted to come out and make a statement that, you know, they're a big-time program, a big-time team, but you want to be a big dog, you've got to beat a big dog, and they've got their work cut out for them. Gordon Reese, our referee. Two flags to be checked out. One is down on about the 33-yard line of the Tigers, and the other at about the 28-yard line of the Bulldogs. So as the late, great Lindsey Nelson used to say, the officials are having a conclave. There's a couple of them down. I don't know what all the discussion's about. You know, McNow looks like he just told them, take them back. Louisiana Tech had several options on this play, and they chose the following. Offside on the kicking team, holding by the receiving team during the run back, and those penalties were all set. Therefore, Clemson re-kicks. <laughs> what options did they have? How many options can you have on that? And, no option. They took the option of holding on them. <laughs> so I, I hate to see what their first option was. Well, nevertheless, they're going to re-kick it and do it all over as though it never happened. Gordon Reese, was that your final answer? <laughs> 9.31 to go in the third. Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN. An 18-point Clemson advantage. They were a six-and-a-half-point pick coming in. So Tony Lazaria will kick it off. Quincy Davis took the last one. Tony is on the field to kick off once again. Davis and Davis. From the 
five. Davis darts to the right. Helmet to helmet. Joel Gardner, the senior, out of Lancaster, South Carolina. You could hear the crunch up here. And he got the worst end of the deal, but it was a good collision. He's up and running off. Might be a little woozy there, but that's the way you want to cover a kick. Watch him just close on him right there. Great job of closing by Feaster and Gardner. Gardner gets the worst of it, but that's the way you want to cover it. Davis just had a full head of steam. A 19-yard return. Harris wide to the left. Smith in the backfield. So Luke McGowan, the gunslinger, will have to start picking off some defensive backs and some safeties. And that draw won't get the job done. Rodney Feaster out of Chester High School, Chester, South Carolina, number 47, the junior. One of the reasons why they're so good on special teams, and Clemson's had a great year, covering kicks is because they've got a lot of their starters playing kicks. Feaster was the guy that just made the big hit on the return and then on the first play of the series he comes up with another big play. Harris to the left. Smith in the backfield on second and ten from just across the 22. Short ball control, possession control type pass off to John Smith but the middle collapsing defensively. Feaster helped out in there. Hayfleet and Hill. Tech's got to attack him downfield. They're throwing the ball right where Clemson wants him to throw it. Short and in the middle so that they can converge on the ball. Tech's got to attack him outside and try to get downfield. Slot to the left. Dag loans him out to the right. They've got the isolated coverage on Delwyn Dig if they want to go to him. Exactly where the gunslinger went. It's picked off. Brian Mance, his third pick of the year out of Manning High School. This secondary has really stepped up. They were challenged. They hadn't had a good year, but they really stepped up today. Dave tries to run the out and up, and Mance is all over it. Great position, and then he just goes and plays the ball. One thing those receivers have got to do also is when that ball is in the air, you've got to go turn into the DB and knock that ball away. But give that guy right there, Brian Mance, a lot of credit for not biting on that out fake and then playing the football. How about what Reggie Herring, his boss, the defensive coordinator, said last night? We're concerned about jump balls against Tech. We're not very good. In fact, he said we're average in the secondary. A little misdirection. And that's a first down for the Tigers. Air Reese Curry, the freshman. good job of turnover ratio this year six and five not so good but they've stepped it up here that so, turnover ratio is huge every year every team is is always conscious of their takeaway and turnovers and normally when you get more takeaways and turnovers you're successful Hamilton in motion looks for the tight end incomplete Ben Hall with the touchdown catch. 7.33 to go down to the sidelines. Heather Cox. With 28 points, the Clemson Tigers certainly making an impact on the field. But the Clemson fans have also made their presence known in and around the town of Boise. It all started back in 1978 when people said, there's no way they'll go to the Peach Bowl. So they made these $2 bills and printed them with the Clemson Tiger paw so that everybody would, around town would know the impact of these Clemson fans, fans are having. Heather, as you know, Tommy Bowden said most of the recruiting from South Carolina, as you watch Woody Rumble out of bounds from Georgia and from Florida. So his kids have not done a whole lot of traveling. Now a penalty flag is thrown, probably a late hit. Tommy Bowden was saying that they were so thrilled over this crucial.com humanitarian bowl bid. He said, we just might travel out to Boise by covered wagon. His kids went snowmobiling this week. I mean, they've had a great time. They have had a great time. And they said they came here with the intentions of winning this ball game and establishing a base for next year. So far, they're doing a great job of it. Dead ball, personal foul, on the defense, 15 yards, the end of the run, automatic first down. 
That call was against Jamie Nichols. 94, the big defensive lineman, just frustrated right now. And that's what you're starting to see a little bit from Louisiana Tech. He was nowhere near the play, and he just hauled off and hit somebody unnecessarily, and the referee was standing right there. Robert in the backfield. First and ten for the Tigers. After that 14-10 lead at intermission, they've scored 14 straight. Antonio Crow, number 51, the first blue jersey to arrive. 61 tackles on the year for the Bulldogs. The computer information major. He actually played quarterback and defensive back at Cotton Valley High School in Cotton Valley, Louisiana. Terrific athlete. Second and eight. Like we've been saying, he makes you miss. Dantzler down and out of bounds at the 22. Chased out by John Nash. You know, that, that's not going to show very much in terms of yardage, but the yardage he saved was tremendous. Woody Danzler, I mean, this is what all the hype is about this guy. You can see they try to set up the screen, and it's not there. Now he just tries to create, and he's got the speed to just turn a play that would have been nothing into a game for him. Inside the 22, Rappert works with Jasmine in the tail of the tandem. Rappert gets it, Jasmine blocking, look out, untouched. Great job of blocking, watch the guys out in front. Chad Jasmine and number 73, T.J. Watkins, they just flat back a couple guys out there, and Rambert has a huge hole to run through. Right now, Clemson is just overpowering Louisiana Tech. They're bigger, they're stronger, and right now, they're just imposing their will on Tech. 21 yards on the touchdown, Scamper, and 21 unanswered points by the Tigers and Clemson. There's not one Tiger paw. There are 10 on the Bulldogs right now. This has all been since halftime. After we're done this afternoon, we'll welcome you to the Axel Liberty Bowl from Memphis. Brandon Doman, the Mountain West champion, BYU Cougars against the Conference USA champion, Louisville Cardinals, 4 o'clock Eastern time. All part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN. Jack McNell would like to call his old mentor, Gary Croton, and borrow a couple of wide receivers and maybe a couple of his trick plays. Yeah, he'd like to call Troy Edwards and Tim Rattay and all those other great former Tech players because they need him right now. Offensively, they just haven't been able to get into a rhythm. They've got to start going downfield. Right now, they're playing into exactly what Clemson wants him to do, throw the ball short and underneath so those zone players can just come up and make a tackle. They've got to try to stretch those guys outside. Well, they could use a couple of the Bulldogs' famous alum like Terry Bradshaw. Even Carl Malone could help, right? <laughs> well, the way it's going right now, it can't get very much uh, worse than it is, but I don't know about Terry Bradshaw. That dude right now is <laughs> a little old, don't you think? He's making too much money. <laughs> yeah. Quincy Davis chopped down. It's possible that Jack McNell, who was the center of that orange bowl, might need a little fluty magic. The actual play, I actually helped make the play because I sort of missed my guy and forced Flutie out of pocket, which set up the whole timing of the whole deal. And, and uh, you know, actually, when when all I can remember seeing is I'm on my back, I look up, and I see Steve Cahan, uh, my roommate, jumping up and down. And I'm saying, what in the world is he, you know, and then it sort of, fi I figured out that we must have scored. And, and, you know, obviously from there it was a great thing. How about that? He, he helped make the play by missing his block. Charles Hapley with his fourth interception out of Ely High School in Pompano Beach, Florida. All right, John Simon juggled the ball. The receiver, number eight, Hapley, number 40, comes up with another turnover. This secondary is really 
stepped up today. That was the concern coming into the game. They haven't had a good season at all. Been giving up some big plays, so they got challenged. You see the ball just a little behind Simon, and Hayley does a great job of playing the football. And he's saying, yeah, yeah, I got that lead. Again, great job of playing. That's the old tip drill right there. Defensive backs work on that every day in practice. Rambert meets a whole bunch of Bulldogs. The first one to get there was Chris Marshall out of Callaway High School in Jackson, Mississippi. Huge difference when the gunslinger tosses a couple of picks, huh? How about that? That's a that's a tremendous stat right there. 18 starts in his nine wins. He's only thrown one or fewer interceptions in the nine losses. He's thrown two or more, and today it's not looking good for him. Second and 11. Dantzler just safety bounds it off. Air Reese Curry. Right now, Clemson is really getting into a rhythm offensively. They've got Tech's defense back on their heels now, and that's what the running game does for you. When you can establish the run, then they've got to focus on that. That really opens up a lot of room for Woody Danzler and those wide receivers in the passing game. Jackie Robinson wide to the left. Rambert gets a rest. Chad Jasmine, number 10, the sophomore, is the lone running back for Clemson. Dumps it off, Derek Hamilton. Hamilton out of bounds at about the 33 and a half yard line, chased out by Quincy Davis, the senior quarterback. Just a blown coverage by Tech. Woody Danzler's rolling to the left. Everybody thinks he's running, and no one drops to the flat. Derek Hamilton just sits down right there in the flat and just turns it into a big first down. Can't panic if you're tech defensively. You've got to stick to your game plan. Of course, you've got to try to make some things happen, but don't gamble. Crosby, the freshman, wide to the left. A little misdirection. Hamilton comes back the other way. Changes direction. Nice his way down inside the 30, upended at about the 27 and a half yard line. It's been all Clemson in the second half. Bulldogs led 3-0. Then it was 7-3 Tigers. But second half, all orange and white. Big plays offensively for Clemson. But give their defense a lot of credit. They came out taking the ball away from Louisiana Tech and only held them so far to 28 yards in the second half. Second and five for the Tigers. Dantzler bends in behind Kyle Young. Chad Jasmine, big hole left side. Derek Brantley and T.J. Watkins open it up. This big offensive line really controlling the line of scrimmage. Louisiana Tech, their front seven is undersized, so they can't just line up and play physical football. Look at the guard, number 73. Look at him. He just fold blocks and just caves everybody down inside. And Chad Jasmine just has a huge hole to run through, and that's because those guys up front really dominate. And if you're Tech, you've got to start to jump guys around, move after the snap count, try to jump through some gaps and get those linebackers up the field. Getting up slowly for the Bulldogs is Chris Marshall out of Jackson, Mississippi, the junior linebacker. Marshall, their best linebacker, been beaten up a little bit today. This is the second time he's had to go off the field. Tough kid. He's talking to the linebacker coach, Todd Howard, a guy that I played with in Kansas City for the Chiefs. And Todd said this whole linebacking crew, even though they're young, they've got a lot of talent. There is Curry with misdirection, and he will score. With the point after, it'll be 28 unanswered points by the Clemson Tigers. They were playing for pride. They were playing for respect. They were playing for an identity. And they were playing for the seniors. And you know what, Jim? In preparation for this game, Louisiana Tech, they never scrimmage. So the physical aspect for them, they're, they're starting all over again. Clemson scrimmaged three times, so they kept that physical, aggressive mentality. And hitting is something that is that is learned. You've got to learn to be aggressive and continue to be aggressive. Curry, the freshman.
freshman. Second touchdown of the year and 28 unanswered points by the Clemson Tigers after that 19 yard run. Back to the studio we go and check in with our colleague Reese Davis. All right, Jim, back down in the Sun Bowl in El Paso. Back-to-back -back turnovers gave Purdue a second chance on this drive. Down 14-0 to Washington State. Montreal low fouls in there, and Tiller's Boilers are back in it, down by a touchdown in the second quarter. Well, you temporarily had J.C. Pearson's ear until you said Washington State, not Washington Huskies. <laughs> You know, looking at the touchdown, watch how many, and look at the Fumble Ruski, the little trick play right there. They just put it under Curry's legs, but then watch all the missed tackles right here. You know, guys are just running by, arm tackling, just swiping at guys, and, and I really believe, Jim, it's because they didn't do a lot of hitting in bowl preparation. You've got to stay very aggressive, and, you know, for Louisiana Tech, this is the first time they've been in a bowl game in a long time, so the bowl preparation was new to not only the players, but the coaching staff as well, and for Clemson, they've been in bowl games, and they scrimmaged, like I said, three times throughout this bowl preparation, and, and that kept them sharp physically. Lazera with the kick into the end zone for the touchback Bulldogs ball after 28 straight points by the Clemson Tigers, 429 to go in the third. Down on the sideline, Heather. Jim, I am joined by the honorary co-captains of the Humanitarian Bowl, New York Police Officer Paul Mooring and Olympic athlete Stacey Dragila. Now, following the events of September 11th, we are certainly honored. The, the theme this week has been heroes, and we're honored to have heroes of September 11th here. Thank you for having us. And uh, the real heroes, the people here who invited us down, giving us the support to get through all this. And we'd just like to say thank you for all the support that has been given to us. And God bless everyone. We'll go upstairs for this play. <laughs> Bulldogs, nothing doing over that left side. Back to Heather. By Olympic athlete and champion Stacey DeGill, as you prepare for Athens 2000, what does that road look like? Well, it's pretty packed. A lot of people think that I just prepare for an Olympic year, but every year I have a full indoor season, full outdoor season, and right now I'm getting ready for my indoor season, starting off in Madison Square Garden uh, February 1st, and then I head overseas for uh, four meets in four weeks in different countries over there. So a lot of fun, a lot of excitement, um, and a lot of competing against my top riders. So it keeps me charged and ready to go into 2004. Best of luck to both of you. We'll let you enjoy the game. John Simon carries it up near the 34-yard line, the senior. He's been lining up in the slot a lot here this afternoon for head coach Jack Bicknell. Picking up on Heather's sideline theme, Tom Masala, the defensive coordinator over there in the headset and the red jacket, had a brother who worked about a block from the World Trade Center and a brother-in-law who was a New York City fireman. He went about a day and a half before he could locate either one by phone. First time that the Tigers have used this 3-4 defense. It was a little shaky early on for Reggie Herring's crew, but they have just grown more confident as this game's going on. These linebackers have really stepped up as well as the secondary, but it's given them more speed on the field and it's really helped their secondary also who struggled all year but today they're really playing the ball well and that's because those guys up front getting pressure on McCown. Dig number nine wide to the left side Delwyn Dig the senior his last game as a bulldog McCown. Dancing feet never a good sign. In the grasp of Donnell Washington, the freshman, 6'6", 320, out of Battery Creek High School in Beaufort, South Carolina. How many freshman numbers have we called for the Clemson Tigers? I'll bet you Tommy Bowden would like to have fall practice right now. They've got a lot of young players on this team. Donnell Washington, second team freshman All-American. They really like this guy. Big, strong, 6'6", 320 pounds. This guy really has a bright future for the Tigers. to the left, Smith in the backfield. Four white jerseys and only Luke out there with no blockers in front of him brings up a punting situation. 150 and counting left in the third. 
And that's exactly what Clemson wants McCown to do, run. They don't want him to throw the ball because that's where he's most effective. But the reason they're able to do that, their linebackers are doing a great job of running with those inside slot receivers. Those are the guys that normally run those intermediate routes, and they're not open at all. Derek Hamilton, 21 back deep. Dustin Upton, the sophomore punting. Kicking game in good shape for Jack Bicknell. The sophomore averaging close to 42 yards for the season. Under that here in inclement weather in Boise. And delay of game. Yards to the previous spot. Still fourth down. 14-10, his team trailed at halftime, Jack Bicknell, but the Bulldogs a little bit flat. You wonder when the weather starts to take a mental toll. I mean, we've pointed out all the missed tackles, the sloppy tackling by Louisiana Tech. And I think the second half, they've just been out physical. Clemson has come out and just really imposed their will, and now they block the punt. Partially slapped away, and Hamilton just lets it roll dead. Tomorrow on ESPN is Capital One Bowl Week wraps up. It's a rematch of last year's Outback Bowl between 23rd ranked Ohio State, 14th ranked South Carolina. The Buckeyes will need Jonathan Wells to have a big game to knock off Lou Holtz's stellar defensive club. It all starts at 11 Eastern tomorrow morning. short drive from Clemson to South Carolina but look at the short drives today set up by all those turnovers and look at this half they all have ended in touchdowns and that's what Clemson wants they've made a lot of big plays and that's exactly what Louisiana Tech didn't want to happen not much doing around that left side up near the 32 yard line goes Chad Jasmine you know, it's funny, following the story with Reese Davis and the gang back in the studio about the ex-Stanford coach now going to South Bend, a lot of folks were confused when the uh, Irish were making phone calls to Lou Holtz. Holtz said he wasn't leaving, but they were really calling for some advice and some counsel, weren't they? Well, they've got a good man in Tyrone Willingham. As I said earlier, he was a running back coach when I was in Minnesota, so I got to be around him quite a bit. Very intense guy, does a great job at Stanford and should do very well at Notre Dame as well. Chad Jasmine on the carry barrels across the 40 yard line and moves the chains. When you were in Minnesota, you had a chance to play with one of the great guys in the NFL, Chris Dolman. Chris Dolman, one of the best guys, as you said, that I played with not only on the field but off the field. Time ticking down in quarter number three as our Capital One Bowl week continues on ESPN. We're the first of three terrific games, the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. It was 3-0 Bulldogs, and then it's been all Clemson, 42-10 after three. You are a cyber jock. You bid on memorabilia. You're addicted to fantasy football. You outscore your kids in the sports PC game. You need more memory, tough guy. Fantasy freeze up. Don't let your system slow you down. A memory upgrade from Crucial.com can speed up your computer so you can keep up with the pros. You are a cyber jock. Crucial.com. The memory experts. Airbag patent, 30th anniversary. Tele-aid, 2nd anniversary. Safety crumple zones, 50th anniversary. Retractable hardtop, 5th anniversary. Anti-lock brakes, 23rd anniversary. Mercedes, 100th anniversary. 100 years of innovations. Find great values at the Mercedes 100th anniversary event. Our anniversary gift to you. been said, men tend to communicate shoulder to shoulder. If that's the case, these guys are saying, let's change the world. Let's make a difference. Let's act as we are called. The Knights of Columbus.
service to one and service to all. Anytime your throat's sore, anytime it's dry or scratchy, anytime it needs real TLC, it needs trusted Luden's care. For everyday throat irritation, only Luden's combines proven relief, all wrapped up in luscious Luden's flavor that tastes as good as it works. So anytime your throat needs real care, remember, everybody needs a little TLC. Gusek in the third looms large for the Bulldogs. 28 unanswered points by the Tigers and 42-10, a whopping advantage heading into quarter number four. Danzler dumps it off. Roscoe Crosby, the freshman, chopped down at the 45-yard line. Did you see Derek Brantley, number 71? Go out on Willie Shepard. Oh my goodness. He went out there and really laid a shot on him. This quick screen is only effective because guys like Brantley, the tackles, have the speed and the footwork to get out there and block those corners. See if the Tigers will work on the clock just a little bit. Robinson left. Hamilton the backfield. Woody rambles to his left. And good discipline by Louisiana Tech. You know, we talked to Tommy Bowden last night about the weather, about disadvantages versus advantages. He thought it was going to be more of a disadvantage to his team. And he alluded to one practice they had her this week. He said one guy actually went in motion on a play, one of his receivers with his hands in the hand warmer. He didn't think that was a good sign. But he said, <laughs> other than grits at the pregame meal this morning and set a steak on the menu, the players probably like the morning kickoff here local time a little bit better. This weather really hasn't affected them too much, especially in the second half. They've really gotten this offense going. Hamilton, nothing doing. Jason Olford with five interceptions on the year out of Lufkin High School. Olford ran track and field. Played football for Coach John Outlaw there. He's also a third degree black belt in Taekwondo he says it really helps him playing football because he has to use his hands and his feet so much as well as balance but you know this defense has really struggled since they've lost their leader Bobby Gray who got injured in the first half he was really the heart and soul of this defense and they've struggled since he's gone out of the game junior punter number 32 cop no flag and the fair catch at the 25 and a half yard line 12.55 to go here in Boise. Snowy Boise is the players who woke early this morning with about four inches of the white fluffy stuff, but the Tigers have had no problem. You are an online trader. You live by spreadsheets, rely on real-time stock quotes, crunch financial forecasts. You need more memory, Big Mac. Don't let your system slow you down. A memory upgrade from Crucial.com can speed up your computer so you can grab the bull market by the horns. Okay, you John. are an online trader. Crucial.com. The memory experts. Solamente los mejores pueden decir. Welcome to McDonald's. We're sending our best to Salt Lake City, too, to serve the world's best athletes. Congratulations to the over 400 winners of McDonald's Global Crew Competition. Welcome to McDonald's. McDonald's, a worldwide Olympic partner. It's beautiful. Yeah. Thanks for all your help. It's my job. Yes. 
Yes, we can. We know how you feel, and that's why we're here, in Circuit City. We're with you. Sweetie. Yeah, just put that anywhere. I couldn't wait to show off my new wheels at the reunion until... I told my State Farm agent I really needed to fix fast and he mentioned Service First. When you choose State Farm Service First Claims Program, you don't have to get estimates. You go straight to a participating repair center where they guarantee their work. It's as simple as that. I was looking good again in no time. Ronnie? Service First. Just one more way. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Commercial.com Humanitarian Bowl, Clemson 42. The Bulldogs of Louisiana Tech 10, 12.55 left to go before this one goes into the record books. McCowan, 15 of 32, two picks, 188 yards. It's the gunslinger, throws this one down on the blue AstroTurf. Let's check our exclusive ESPN game track with J.C. Clemson just completely dominated the third quarter and started right out of the box. They drive all the way down Ben Hall for a five-yard touchdown. Then Rampert really got rolling. Touchdown on the ground as well as one through the air, but the defense really stepped up. Two big interceptions. Got the ball back to their offense, and Clemson really just started to overpower Louisiana Tech. From just across the 25-yard line, second and 10, and flag day. Jovan Bush, 95, jumped off. See if he was drawn offside. For the snap, offside, defense, five yards to the previous spot, still second down. And those guys up front, they just got their ears pinned back right now. They want to just get up the field. They're trying to guess the snap count. They know Tech's got to throw the ball, so they're not even concerned really about the run right now. Those guys up front are trying to get to the quarterback. to the right. McCown fires on a rope dropped at the 47-yard line by Dig. Delwyn Dig, 14th in the USA in receptions per game. The fitness and wellness major. He's normally a sure-handed guy. He's had some drops today as well as this entire receiving core for Tech. And that's really hurt him. But being down 42 to 10, they need to speed this game up. They're taking too much time to get the plays called. They've got to get some plays ran and try to get some big plays. Third and five. McCown can run for it if he wants to. Luke goes out of bounds at 39. Barreled out by a couple of the white and orange jerseys of the Clemson Tigers. <laughs> They're not backing off in the hitting department, are they? What a hit by Rodney Feaster. Feaster and Trevon Muntz. Well, this new 3-4 defense for Clemson has really worked well. You can see those guys are still very aggressive. And it's been able to allow them to get more athletes on the field, something that I'm sure they're going to use a lot next year. at the 46-yard line in the grasp of Bra Braxton Williams. Braxton Williams out of Dudley High School in Greensboro. One sack, three forced fumbles on the year. Good athlete. He's a guy that normally would not play very much. They switched this new defense. That brings him on the field as a nickelback. And you can see he's made a lot of big plays today for him. Clock moving. 12.05 and counting. Little flare pass near midfield, and John Simon makes the catch number eight. Every time we check in with Reese, I'm afraid we've got a new head coach somewhere. Reese, what do we got? <laughs> Hank, everybody's job safe right now. Pat Hill was rumored for a while to be a head coach, and why not? Head coach of Fresno State sees David Carr go to work to Steven Spock, and the Bulldogs up on Michigan State, 7 0 in the Silicon Valley Classic, and down in El Paso. Purdue has now added a field goal, and it's now a 14-10 game. Washington State still on top. Boilermakers on the short end by four. Thank you, Reese. Quick shot of Bobby Bodden over, or Tommy Bodden over on the sideline. Whoops. Bobby's sitting in an easy chair today, isn't he? McCown at the 43-yard line. Ahmad Harris, the junior. Kevin Johnson, 27, the first for the Tigers to get there. 
And I'm really surprised that Tech is not going downfield. You've got to take some chances. You're down 42 to 10. There's about 11 minutes left in the ball game. You've got to make some big plays or at least attempt to. Those nickel and dime routes right there, that's what Clemson wants you to run so they can come up and make the tackle. Simon in the backfield. McCown over the middle, wide open, drop at the 30-yard line by Dig. You don't see that very often. We talked about the fitness and wellness major who is a senior. Back in 96, he was a member of the Southern Lab Kittens State High School Champions for both basketball and football. We talk about what an athlete he is, huh? He's a great athlete. He's got the drops today, though. I don't know if it's the weather or he's not accustomed to wearing gloves, catching the ball, but the balls are catchable. He just has to hang on to them. He's a big play guy for him, a guy they want to get the ball to. Well, he had the hand injury against K-State and against Tulsa when he missed those two games. McCown with the short passes. Good point by J.C. Pearson. Not going to get it done when you're down by 32. Those are the routes that Clemson wants him to run. They're going to sit back in this zone, let him run the short routes, and just come up and make the tackle. Make them work for everything they get. That's why Tech's got to take some shots downfield. Clock starts 11:19 and counting. They reset the chains. Simon in the backfield, but he's more for a safety valve. Blood to the left. Dig, bottom of the screen. Blitz is on. Down goes Luke. John Leake with his second sack today out of Plano, Texas, and Joe Von Bush out of Hardyville, South Carolina. You can see they're very happy on the Clemson side. They're just coming with speed outside, and their tackles don't have the foot speed and quickness to get to those linebackers who are blitzing outside. See, Leak just ran right by Damian Laverne. Laverne, 331 pounds, but not used to having to give ground and get outside that fast on a guy like Leak. McCown, nice throw, good catch, out of bounds near the 39 goes Harris. Now we talked about Reggie Herring, the defensive coordinator. It's his 19th bowl appearance, three as a player and 16 as a coach. Clemson's bowl record recently. Doesn't look good, does it? Five straight losses. They're going to make up for it this year. Looks like they're going to come out with a big win. And not only is it great for this program, but these kids, they're, they're a very young football team. Most of these guys are going to be back next year, and it's a great start for them building on next season. Third and 15. McCowan, a little misinformation there. Dig turned it inside. Good coverage by the free safety and the corner. Feaster in the vicinity. Hatefully's come up with an interception so far. And number two for the Clemson Tigers. Mance has also had a pick today. And Mance just jumped that slant route. That's all they've been running outside, the short routes. So the cornerbacks are starting to sit down now and squat on those routes, and Mance jumps a slant. That's why you got to give these guys, give them a slant and go. Give them a double move. See if you can get them to bite and then go over the top. Going for it on fourth and 15. the five the receiver turned it outside so miscommunication on two consecutive plays and that'll do it 20 of 42 for Luke McCown 224 yards two picks all Clemson second half Louisiana Tech University, we're providing students with the technological know-how to compete nationally and internationally. Tech imparts a broad background in liberal arts, science, education, engineering, business, and more. And we continue to produce outstanding athletes. Terry Bradshaw, Carl Malone, and Teresa Witherspoon, to name a few. Standing solid, proud of where we've been and where we're going. Inventing tomorrow, starting with you. Louisiana Tech University. Here in Chef Neri's kitchen in Italy, Olive Garden chefs have learned to make her special tortelloni di pizzano. For $8.95, you can enjoy it tonight with your family, while Chef Neri's favorite student learns to make it for hers. Olive Garden, when you're here, you're family. Day 15, just 900 feet from the summit. Day 15. Where's he going? 
Oh, hey, guys. Just gonna mail my credit card payment. You mean you don't have a Capital One No Hassle card? Want a choice of payment dates? Try Capital One's No Hassle card. Plus, get the nation's lowest long-term fixed rates and no telemarketing. What's in your wallet? Number one Miami faces number two Nebraska for the national championship. The Rose Bowl presented by AT&T. Thursday night at 8, 5 Pacific on ABC. Brendan, Dominic, and the high-flying wings defend Hockey Town against Paul Korea and the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. Western Conference feathers fly on ESPN Wednesday Night Hockey. Ducks at Red Wings, 8 Eastern Wednesday on ESPN. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2001 Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl is presented by Crucial.com. The memory experts. You need more memory, my friend. And in part by your local McDonald's. We love to see you smile. My tag team partner, J.C. Pearson, is laughing. Tell him the truth, what I said during the commercial. Well, you're wondering if we were going to see Willie Simmons, and what do you know, the first play out, we see Willie Simmons, the quarterback. The sophomore, the backup to the outstanding senior who will close his Clemson career with a win here in this crucial.com humanitarian bowl. So let's take a look at Willie Simmons, 6'1", 195, the sophomore out of Shanks High School, Quincy, Florida. The marketing major, one interception and three picks on the year. Not a lot of work when you're backing up Woody, huh? And you know, he's in a tough spot because the expectation level now is so high for that quarterback position with all the things that Woody did. Willie Simmons, if he doesn't come in and just be phenomenal, they're going to start calling for someone else. Well, that's a pretty good start. He completes his first pass to Derek Hamilton. Off to the races again. Cuts it back against the grain and will score. But a penalty flag back at the 45-yard line. They're going to bring this back. Got to hold them. Personal foul offense and a dead ball personal foul defense, and those penalties will offset. Wow. So they're going to have to bring that back. They offset, so it's a touchdown. Derek Hamilton, like another number 21. Deion Sanders kind of dances into the end zone, and I think Coach Bicknell is just shell-shocked right now. And again, did, did you notice how many missed tackles there were on that play? I think Louisiana Tech is just thoroughly beaten right now. They just want to get this game over with. They yeah, they're just, playing like it. They are. They've been thoroughly beaten this entire second half, and, you know, that shows when you're missing tackles, the effort is not really there. That's when you should. That's when a team shows that you know they're they're ready to just pack it up. Lonesome dove over there. Where were the guys saying good job to Willie Simmons? And how about that? We we're just talking about how tough it was going to be for him. What does he do? Come in and throw a touchdown pass. 57 yards to Hamilton. Willie says, "Hey guys, I know Woody's your hero, but I just did okay. <laughs> Give me some love." This Craftmatic Model 2 electrically adjustable bed costs no more than many quality flat beds. And when you buy selected ones with optional heat and built-in massage, you get this fabulous bonus. A 25-inch color TV absolutely free. Call toll-free to receive complete free information by mail. In a flat bed, you have to use pillows to prop yourself up. But in a Craftmatic bed, you adjust yourself into comfortable positions automatically. So you can watch TV, read, and get a great night's sleep. Raise and support your head neck, shoulders, back, legs, and feet at the touch of a button. Plus, there's optional heat and built-in massage to soothe you. Call toll-free so we can mail you our adjustable bed catalog and the certificate for a free 25-inch color TV with bed purchase. Call to get our free catalog and color TV certificate by mail now. There is absolutely no obligation. Call toll-free 1-800-719-3737. That's 1-800-719-3737, toll-free. 1-800-719-3737. A New Year's Day special. 
Jonathan Wells and the Buckeyes clash with Derek Watson and the Gamecocks. Snowed under Ohio State, South Carolina, the Outback Bowl, 11 a.m. New Year's Day on ESPN. A New Year's Day special. Jonathan Wells and the Buckeyes clash with Derek Watson and the Gamecocks. Snowed under Ohio State, South Carolina, the Outback Bowl, 11 a.m. New Year's Day on ESPN. There's a happy young man, Willie Simmons, who just threw that 57-yard scoring strike. Hey, hey, Mom, what? Yeah, that's when it's fun. When, when you're up 49 to 10, these games really get fun. Seems like all he has done, Tony Lazara, is kick off here in the second half. Eric Franklin. Second time in this game, Lazera made the last stop. Another penalty flag to be checked out at about the 38-yard line of the Bulldogs. Holding against Louisiana Tech, I think. It's what it looks like it's going to be, and it's just been one of those days for Tech. Whenever they get something good going, like a nice kickoff return, it's coming back because of the penalty. by the receiving team during the run back. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Seven times over 400 yards. Four times over 500 yards. And 504 today. And counting. Talk about a high-powered offense. That's 11 games right there. And you can see that. They're starting the party early over there. They got, they got the Soul Train line working. <laughs> Tommy Bond will start booking some more cold weather sites with snow and blizzard, won't he? If they can keep playing like this, they may move to somewhere cold. McCown dumps it off to DJ Curry, and he is chopped down at the 25. 9.04 left to go in this one and counting. We go back to the studio and check in with Reese. And Jim again down at the Sun Bowl, Purdue and Washington State. You know, Brandon Hans transferred from Purdue largely because of this, I would imagine. Kyle Orton to Taylor Stubblefield, who is carving up the Cougar D. Almost 100 yards receiving. We're tied at 17. Still to come on our Capital One Bowl Barrage today, the Axel Liberty Bowl, BYU and Louisville. Then at 7.30, the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, Auburn and North Carolina. It's definitely not the same Louisiana Tech team that gave Auburn all they wanted. No, they just haven't been able to get in sync offensively. Clemson's given them some different looks, looks that they haven't seen all year long. It's really confusing. McCown over the middle, incomplete. Well, that 3-4 defense, the surprise by Reggie Herring, fifth year as the Tiger defensive coordinator and guru, if you will. Asked Reggie last night if he's enjoyed bowl week here. You know, the fishing, the trout fishing along the Boise River and the snowmobiling. He said, you know, that's for the players and for the alumni to enjoy. All he does is stay in his room and work. Yeah, he looked like it, too. He didn't look like he was having very much fun. He was worried about this game because, you know, as I've been saying, his secondary struggled all year, but today they've been phenomenal. He had a great line. We asked him about the running game of La Tech. He said, they just do it just to giggle. Wide open and a great grab by Delwyn Diggs, sliding and hanging on the excellent concentration. But if we see Tech finally downfield outside that's something they should have been doing all ball game long Clemson plays a lot of cover too so there's going to be a hole between that corner and the safety right there but they haven't attacked that zone at all and that's something I'm surprised that they haven't done more of 29 yard pickup line of scrimmage the 45 Luke back pedal swings it out almost another interception John Leake well, you see why they like this guy, Leak. Now, he's all over the football field. Not only is he blitzing McCown and making tackles on the running back, but he's dropping under coverage also and almost comes up with an interception. You can see this almost looks like double coverage. Leak is a linebacker. He's just dropping to the flat. And 
he gets there so fast it's almost double coverage man under that's what Reggie Herring was talking about the 3 3 5 the 3 2 6 more speed on the field the better athletes in the space Dake with his second great grab covered there by two Ray Francis out of Richland Northeast High School back in Columbia three picks on the year for two Ray but that's what they expect to see out of day a guy that's going to make some tough catches he's been a big play man for tech his entire career he's actually third all time in receiving yards at tech over 3,000 yards so those are some things that they expect to see from him almost picked off again this one by chad carson the middle linebacker he's got three sacks on the year and one pick Tonight, 7.30 Eastern Time, Capital One Bowl Week continues with a Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl from Atlanta. Julius Peppers for the last time in a North Carolina uniform. The Tar Heels battle Auburn. It all starts 7.30 Eastern Time. The third game of today's triple header. Auburn getting two points from North Carolina. This team was a six and a half point underdog to Clemson. Took a three nothing lead and then the freight train. to the right and get the safeties thinking right day just runs the post right behind the safety and runs right by to Ray Francis for a big play that's something again I, I can't say enough and harp on enough you've got to attack and go downfield especially when you've got the weapons that Louisiana Tech has outside you've got to be able to stretch the field this might be optimistic they go for two Six yards, a buck 26 on the clock, and watch the concentration by the outstanding senior number nine, Delwyn Dig. ESPN and ESPN2, home of the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship. You are a cyber jock. You bid on memorabilia. You're addicted to fantasy football. You outscore your kids in the sports PC game. You need more memory, tough guy. Fantasy freeze up. Don't let your system slow you down. A memory upgrade from Crucial.com can speed up your computer so you can keep up with the pros. You are a cyber jock. Crucial.com. The memory experts. Hey, boys, what y'all doing? Just out here checking these old fences. Yeah, me too. Hey, is that a dollar? Yeah, it's on my side of the fence. Woo! Wrong. That's on my side. No, that's on my side. It is on my side. <laughs> guys, on, guys, it's just a buck. Oh, yeah, with 10, 10, 2, 20, all calls up to 20 minutes or 99 cents. 20 minutes for 99 cents? And 7 cents a minute? After 20. Wow, that's cheap. Guess he had to make a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> call me. Dial 10, 10, 2, 20. Discover the amazing training secrets of Baseball World's dynamic practice organization video featuring professional scout and instructor Tommy Mansky and his famous step-by-step -step building block approach to athletic training. These are the same techniques that have produced Baseball World's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU national championship teams. Parents, players, and coaches are amazed at the rapid improvement of students using these principles, enhancing arm strength, running speed, quickness, and agility. Dynamic practice organization works for all ages and levels of ability and makes a great gift to order now. The folks are bundled up in all sorts of paraphernalia. Welcome back, everybody, to the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. Anticipating the onside kick, number 16, Joe Don Reams, is the only Clemson Tiger back deep. Josh Scobie, who started the scoring, optimistically, 3-0 for the Bulldogs. Puts it down on the tee. Back in the studio, Reese. 
Jim Silicon Valley Classic, Fresno State missed a field goal, and Jeff Smoker would answer. Now, Fresno State gets to the quarterback, but their pass defense ranked 98th in That's America, right. and they can't contain the nation's leading receiver in yards per catch. Charlie Rogers going 72 yards to the house to tie the game at seven, but it would get worse for the dogs. David Carr drops his snap, and Monquist Wedlow is there to recover. Spartans on top 14-7. Wax schools to the left of us, wax schools to the right of us. Thank you, Reese. We'll be checking in with you as this game continues to take on down. 7.39 left to go. We mentioned that it didn't go the 10 yards. It was touched by the Bulldogs, so it's Clemson's ball. Spotted at the 43-yard line of Louisiana Tech. Simmons, who just threw that touchdown toss, stays in at quarterback. The promising sophomore for Tommy Bowden, and that one is incomplete. Morgan Woodward, who only came in with three catches on the year, the tight end, number 83, the intended receiver. Willie Sim Simmons, who has played some, and you can see, had a great game against North Carolina last year, as well as Georgia Tech. This year hasn't played a whole lot. One game against Maryland, 65 yards in passing, but a guy that they really like, of course, he's not going to be Woody Danzler. Danzler, yesterday they told us that, but a guy that they really like and has a lot of ability. That was Chad Jasmine, number 10, the uh, sophomore. The offensive coach, Brad Scott, told us last night that Chad Jasmine is just slow enough to be a good cutback runner. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if I'm Jasmine, I don't know if I'd take that as a, as a compliment or not. All Clemson after leading 14-10 at the intermission. We're live in Boise. Stick around. More coming up when we come back. Hold on a vacation your family will always remember. Arkansas, the natural state. Arkansas Vacation Planning Kit. Call today. Seven twenty-five left to go in the game before this crucial dot-com humanitarian bowl goes into the record books. The Clemson Tigers will up their record to seven and five on the season, and the Bulldogs will end up also with a seven and five mark. Simmons chopped down. This afternoon, the Axel Liberty Bowl, live from Memphis. Brandon Doman, the Mountain West champion, BYU Cougars, and Gary Crook tuned up here at Louisiana Tech. And the Conference USA champion, Louisville Cardinals, 4 o'clock Eastern time, all part of Capital One Bowl Week. Cardinals are a three-point pick. Of course, their outstanding running back, Luke Staley, is out. Just to go back to that Orange Bowl back in 84 when he was the center for Doug Flutie, the following year, his quarterback, as you know, Doug is somewhat diminutive in size. His quarterback was 6'5". The first thing the new quarterback said was, Jack, get your butt up a little higher. <laughs> well, after having snapped at Flutie all those, all those years, he was probably pretty low to the ground because Doug's only about 5'11". I said to him yesterday, you weren't big enough to be a center. He said, I wouldn't even recruit myself. He gets tightly wound on game day, doesn't he? He doesn't sure even does. talk to him. He lets Coach Jackson do the rah-rah uh, on game day sometimes. Very intense coach, and, you know, this team has to start to mirror his intensity. Obviously, they've had a great season, but not finishing up the way they would like to. Win cop punts it away, and the catch at the 19-yard line. So 7-10 before this one is history. Woody is done for the day. Luke is still in there. Big difference. The turnovers. The turnovers and touchdowns. Woody, four touchdowns, no interceptions, and did a good job of managing this offense like he always does. 
Woody Dantzler, one of the best players ever in the history of Clemson, but also just put up some unbelievable numbers throughout his career. First four games, 64 combined points today, 67 points. We said this game has a history of wide open shootout affairs. Incomplete at the 40-yard line, looking for Day. Tell you what, he's going to make some NFL coach quite a prospect, isn't he? He's a good receiver. You know, very quick, very fast. He's a guy that can possibly be a good return man, a slot receiver. They've got to you know, just try to get him the ball a little more today. Of course, this is going to be his last game for Louisiana Tech, and they're trying to get him single covered down here and hopefully be able to run by for a big play. Eric Franklin wide to the left. Smith in the backfield. McCown grabbed by John Simon. Simon near midfield down at the 48-yard line. Simon, another one of their big play guys that really haven't been able to get off today. He just comes up and runs a dig route. He tries to stick it outside. He freezes the linebacker. He's able to come up with the play, but we haven't seen very much of Simon. Simon's been a guy that has done it all for Tech all year long. He runs the ball. He catches it. He's even thrown a couple touchdown passes. As in two out of three for 55 yards and two interceptions, but another pick. That was Eric Meekins out of Easley High School in Easley, South Carolina. Ouch. Well, we talked about Gary Croton and his Cougars of BYU. They're up next against the Cardinals of Louisville in the Axel Liberty Bowl from Memphis. run virtually the same offense that Louisiana Tech runs today. Of course, you, you said that Croton and Big Nell, of course, talk constantly and talk offensive strategy, but I'm sure they're hoping that they can get it done a lot better than Tech is doing today. Willie Simmons keeps it on the ground. Nothing doing. Straight ahead goes Chad Jasmine. Down on the sideline, we'll check in with Heather Cox again. As JC just mentioned, Gary Croton was the head coach when Coach Bicknell was the O-line coach. I talked to Coach Bicknell yesterday. Yes, they've talked repeatedly over the last five weeks in preparing for the bowl. He asked Gary how to prepare, how to practice, how to keep the team focused with the long layoff. A very special day for the longtime friends between Gary Croton and Jack Bicknell. Over on the sideline for Jack's Bulldogs there. Back in 95, when Jack Bicknell was in his last year in New Hampshire, he was making about $30,000. What do you suppose his quarterback on that Hail Mary play was making about that same year? A whole lot more than that. <laughs> and is still making a whole lot more than that. Just a huge surge by the left side. T.G. Watkins and Derek Brantley for Chad Jasmine. And that's what they've done this entire second half. They've just impose their will on Louisiana Tech all, all second half virtually. We'd like to welcome those of you on ESPN International. J.C. Pearson's here. Heather Cox down on the sideline. I'm glad you're on board. The Clemson Tigers about to close their season on a winning note and up their record to seven and five. The winners of the Western Athletic Conference, they won their conference in the first year, seven and one, will drop to seven and five overall. But a great job turning around a three and nine club for head coach Jack Bicknell. It was 14-10 Clemson at intermission. And after that, Clemson just wore down the Bulldogs. Turnover is a huge part of the second half. Wasn't really much of a factor in the first, just that one interception. The two interceptions in the third quarter really gave Clemson some more opportunities. They took advantage of all of them. The third quarter really is when they started to dominate this game. Willie Simmons, the sophomore quarterback, in relief of the super senior, Woody Dantzler. Willie now running for his life. And that'll be intentional grounding. Chased down by Jonte Price, the sophomore. Sophomore chasing sophomore. 
And a reminder coming up next, the Extra Liberty Bowl. Cougars of BYU against the Cardinals. The flag for intentional grounding is going to be picked up. The ball went beyond the line of scrimmage, and the quarterback was outside the five-yard belt. Therefore, no foul by rule. And, you know, I really don't know why Clemson is throwing the ball anyway. You're up 49 to 18, about four and a half minutes left in the game. Why not keep the ball on the ground, keep this clock moving, and be satisfied with the win? Tommy Bowden, when he was back in the sixth or the seventh grade, he recalls writing his own autobiography, and in it, he actually wrote a page where he said he wanted to be a college coach. Imagine writing your autobiography. I asked him if he had read it recently. He says, I can't even remember where it is, but my mom probably knows. <laughs> Complete double coverage down at about the 28 yard line. Why are they throwing the ball? That's a good question. They've got some young guys in. They may just be wanting, of course, they wanted to build on next year, so they've got some young guys in right now. They're trying to give them some game action and see what they can actually do, but I mean, it makes no sense right now. You're up way up 31 points, about four minutes left. Just keep the clock moving. The fair catch at the 24-yard line by John Simon. The votes are in and tabulated, and no dangling chads. Capital One player of the game is Mr. Woody Danzler. No surprise there, huh? <laughs> 275 total yards, four touchdown passes in all. I was going to give you some numbers. Just another typical Woody Danzler day. Here are the numbers. 10, 53, 5, and 62. And that's not the pick four. Those are the touchdown tosses that Woody has thrown here this afternoon. quarterback for Louisiana Tech and this one is incomplete. Danzler's our MVP here, our MVP in the studio. Back to Reese. Such kind words, Jim. Thank you. But there's a duel going on for early MVP favorites in the Silicon Valley Classic. David Carr looking for Rodney Wright and he finds him still in the first quarter of that game and Fresno State and Michigan State locked at 14. Fresno State and the Spartans all knotted up. Causey comes in at quarterback, the sophomore. Both are 6'4". Luke McCown, 6'4", 200. And Maxie Causey, 6'4", 192. That's on the career. This year, he's only 4 of 9 for 59 yards, and his longest pass has been 29 yards. Just a safety valve out to Joe Smith, and helmet to helmet again, hard hitting at the 35-yard line. And again, it's a noticeable difference, the aggressiveness of Clemson's defense versus Louisiana Tech's defense. I mean, there's just no comparison. Those guys are flying around, they're hitting people, they're wrapping up, and just the opposite to Tech. Causey, flood to the left. Caught, diving catch at the 49 by day. He's got his own highlight film going here this afternoon. Leak back there on the coverage. Causey fires incomplete at the 35-yard line, looking for Eric Franklin, the sophomore. Brother Derek played football at Tulane. Cougars of Gary Croton and BYU up against the Cardinal of Louisville. Ranked number 22, the Axel Liberty Bowl is our Capital One Bowl Barrage and Bowl Week continues here on ESPN. A triple header. Well, Louisiana Tech has now played all three of the Bowden boys. Dad Bobby was the first game. Jack Bicknell, his head coach, had to face top-ranked Florida State. The Bowden family, Louisiana Tech, 0 and 5. But marked down September the 7th next year. This is the first meeting between the Bulldogs and the Tigers, but at Clemson, September 7th next season, they'll get it on again. 
This is going to be a good training field for Louisiana Tech just to see what they can get accomplished next year in that game. So that's why they're staying aggressive, seeing what will actually work against this defense. attack downfield and Dave just runs the out and up and comes up with the big play. except for the official stats. Reese will have the final score and the final stats as well as will Sports Center. Our Bowl Barrage Capital One continues. For Heather, JC, and all our gang here, Happy New Year, everybody. We'll go back to the studio. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Let's go back to Reese. Okay, Jim, an impressive performance by Clemson's offense, particularly on the blue turf in the cold there in Boise. They ended up some money to get into that bowl, and they made it pay off with an impressive performance. We'll certainly keep you up to date and let you know the final score and any more scoring if it happens. We're going to get you out to the Axel Liberty Bowl in just a little bit between BYU and Louisville. But first, Tyrone Willingham is the new head coach at Notre Dame. He has agreed to a contract six years.